Welcome gamers to Wednesday Night Modern here at the Nerd Rage Gaming Storefront. We are so excited to have you in Twitch chat with us tonight. My name is Haviva Goodman alongside Dominic Stryker. How you doing tonight, Dom? That's me. I'm doing lovely. The league has ended. The weight has lifted. Congratulations, Isaac, on our Season 2 league. You are the champion. We will give you your play mat whenever mm -hmm. you, you get back to the store and your name is going on the plaque. On the plaque. Woohoo! You are memorialized forever in history, in energy history. And uh, this match here, we have some of the other folks who are mm -hmm. clawing towards the top. I couldn't help it when I saw they were paired up. I was like, this is going to be sick. Yeah, Jack, good game. Jack, the goblin ringleader, starting off on the play with his goblin deck against Clark, playing what I think is kind of the newest hotness in this uh, Demir Frog Tide. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. A little bit of discard, a little bit of counterspell, a little bit of psychic frog, and a little bit of merc tide as uh, this Thossie is firing off, seeing at the full hand of this goblin deck. Yeah, as I assume our, our viewers know, we have a modern event in just a couple of weeks, right before the the uh, the announcement, the BNR. Yes, <laughs> very anticipated BNR, right? We have mm -hmm. team trios, which includes modern and a modern proper event as well. Uh, and so we're getting some good looks into what the potential archetypes are going to be at that event. I know Clark's been on energy, which is probably going to be maybe a couple of different kinds of decks. Uh, but right now he's on this Merktide list yeah. for tonight. I would say on the list of decks that, whether it's true or not, believe themselves to be Nadu killers. Mm -hmm. It'll be Boros energy, Mardu energy, Jeska energy, and this Frogtide deck. Yeah. But the thing is, is uh, even if something were to happen, who knows what, something. Could I, be anything. All these decks are still pretty sick <laughs> yeah so they won't be going anywhere they'll just uh run out of competition and change some sideboard slots yeah i'm i'm excited to see how the modern metagame evolves over rcq season oh yeah it's As already started mm -hmm. this past weekend you could so many folks already firing their bullets you viewer at home can earn yourself a fantastic looking supreme verdict and oh, sleight yeah. of hand yeah yeah, yeah. at yep. your local lgs excuse yep. me that's redundant at your lgs <laughs> We'll get back to the game at hand, though. Two top eight competitors, Whoa. Clark and Jack. Jack on Goblins is going to play a Goblin Matron and go looking we after Clark plays a Psychic Frog. Jack here has a Vial on two, and against my blue-black opponent, I might be trying to get this Conspicuous Snoop and try to sneak it in using this Vial because that's kind of our only piece of card advantage or mm -hmm. the Goblin Ringleader that you can use as card advantage if you can resolve it next turn. Mm -hmm. I like the Snoop because the if you resolve it part, it's kind of taken over by the Aether Vial. Well, let's take a look at what's in Clark's hand here if we're worried about resolution. I saw a Spell Pierce, which doesn't do much. <laughs> a, a two Spell Pierce. Two Spell Pierce. A Polluted Delta. Jack here grabbing a Warren Instigator. If we could oh pull boy. this up. He's playing a little bit of that, l that new Goblin Spice. Yeah, we talked about this last time he was on camera, I believe. Um, the synergy with Arena of Glory. That's the one. Is the reason he has put this card into his deck. Uh, a red land, or a colorless land, but a mm -hmm. land that makes red mana out of MH3, and you can exert it, which is a fun mechanic from Amonkhet block, uh, to... Oh Make goodness. two mana, give the creature haste. Thank you. Go back up there, comment, co-commentator. Which allows us Warren Instigator with double strike to kind of sneak in on someone and possibly sneak two goblins on a play, like the big sling gang, Mob Mog, and Kikiji that Jack has stranded in hand. Mm-hmm. What we'll need to find out is, will the instigator survive to even try to attack? I'd imagine, you know, cards like Fatal Push, uh, Go for the Throat. There's a new removal spell with Forage that's very, very good that's going to start creeping into decks. Oh, I should know what that is. I've been practicing st so much standard. Um, it's a uh, one and a B, destroy target creature or planeswalker, then Forage mm -hmm. as the remainder of the cost. It's kind of a murderous cut that can hit walkers if you squint in your eyes enough. Yeah, for those that aren't familiar with the Bloomberg mechanic Forge, it's exile three cards from your graveyard or sacrifice a food. Right, so the exile three cards from your graveyard is very similar to delving for a murderous cut. Mm -hmm. So realizing that if you pay the one and a B, you can now hit Planeswalkers as well if you're willing to pay that cost. But I bring all this up because this Merktide deck may have a plethora of different removal spells and maybe difficult for this instigator to get in. And it's interesting to see Jack allowing the Thoughtseize to resolve because Clark could nab the two drop that Jack worked so hard for. Mm -hmm. But Clark Thoughtseize didn't take it, took something else, and now Jack's able to sneak it in. Indeed, he's going to think about upticking this Aether Vial. 
there's there's different lines here that you can think about between like mer uh, a merfolk and goblins deck that uses aether vial. Generally, you want to keep ticking it up until you reach your your high highest point on the curve. But sometimes, depending on your hand or the game at hand, you might want to leave it there. Yeah, and Jack Snap left it on two and is playing this matron, which leads me to believe that we have a plan for a two drop. And this time, it looks to be snooping. Mm hmm. And confirmed. So this will allow. We know Jack hasn't played a land drop yet, so there's possibility to play a land and play a card off the top, depending on how well this snoop could go. Indeed, but looks like just the pass back, though, on his end, Steph Clark will fetch down to 17. Mm hmm. And get a surveil land. Surveil land, indeed. And, you know, it's time to be on Merc Tide Alert because Clark, between playing these spells and these fetch lands, and even if you want to defeat stuff to frog, but we're at the point that we can already start playing. Looks to be right now about a six six Merktide if you want it. Mm -hmm. The surveil still has to resolve as well, so we could put another card into the grave there. And the surveilling just allows you to keep up mana if you do have a Merktide and you're trying to play. Mm -hmm. But it looks like we Ooh. just have snare, pierce, pierce, and another land. So Clark's hand full of counter magic, but Jack's been leaning on this aether vial this whole time. And step will vial in that Snoop, revealing a munitions expert on top. Go back to his turn, and we'll tick up that vial to three now. So quick on the tick up to three. Like, when you see someone not tank and their upkeep on an upkeep effect, it just sends an alarm to me that they know what they're doing, or at least they have a plan. Mm -hmm. That it's like, untap, tick up, go. It's like, they're not thinking about it. Jack knows what Jack wants to do. Well, I don't think I've seen Jack play any other deck besides <laughs> Goblins. So he's, yeah. he's obviously had a lot of experience and practice with this deck. He plays it in Legacy as well. Mm -hmm. So he, he knows these matchups a lot better than his opponents. Like, Most people aren't don't have too much experience playing against Goblins. Jack told me he used to play like four-color Omnath, and I was like, what, what are you talking about? That's... Oh my goodness, I've one never of the last that. decks I would have put him on. I was like, I've never met that band. I don't know who <laughs> he is. As well, you know, we've all we've all done some we've all had some weird phases in our twenties, oh, yes. you know. <laughs> <laughs> as a uh, Jack here is sacrificing matrons to the Skirk Prospector to make some mana to now try to cast his Bogart Harbinger off the top. And it's it's combo time. This card is resolving and mm -hmm. our uh I'm our waiting for the snare. Is not is... thing. There's nothing. We can't. We can only snare twos. We played a one and a three this Oh, card. I'm thinking of Stern Scolding. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. I was, I was like, Stern Scolding so good against, like, all of Jack's deck, but Spell Snare <laughs> is a little more narrow. <laughs> yeah, Clark's showing him just the three one-minute counter spells that don't answer the one drop, the three drop, <laughs> or the combo. And Jack, I mean, I don't mean to say steal, but I think Jack feels like he stole it because Clark not drawing any removal, but double thought sees and frog just wasn't enough. Yeah, very strong start out of Clark. Ripped two cards out of Jack's hand and still wasn't able to get there. The combo win for Jack will take game one in his favor. We'll take a look at deck lists here. This is just one we've grabbed off of MTG Goldfish. Mm. I don't believe Clark has submitted for tonight. But you can look here. These Psychic Frogs out of MH3, probably one of the most popular cards yeah. in the set in both Modern and Legacy at the current moment. And we're seeing it show up a lot more in our local meta as well. Take a look at this sideboard. We've got Harbinger of the Seas, Cling to Dusk, Consigned to Memory, Stern Scolding, probably coming in. Mm. <laughs> Break the Ice, Toxic Dalish, and Nile Spellbomb. Yeah, we're looking at uh, any sort of counter magic or removal that can help us interact with creatures. A card like Toxic Deluge is going to be very mm -hmm. nice depending on how Clark plays it. You could have a Merc Tide and a Frog that don't get swept up in it, but pay two or three life and take all the goblins away. Forget it. Stern Scolding might just hit most of the cards in the deck until we're at like Mog Mob status. Well, that's fine. If I can hit everybody else, and then it'll just depend on the, the uh, season to taste mm -hmm. that our uh, Demir player does have. It's kind of enticing to look at a card like Harbinger when this mana base is so greedy out of this Rakdos deck sometimes. But you have to imagine they're going to try to bring in cards like maybe a, a Dismember or Removal Spell of their own, and Harbinger mm -hmm. might just be a liability if that's a part of your plan. Yeah, we'll take a look at the Goblins deck list while players are still sideboarding. This is Jack's submitted deck list. Thank you very much. You can oh. head to our Discord for looks at those. It's hateful. Read it down. We'll take a look at this sideboard. Harsh Mentor, Plague Engineer, Necromentia, Slaughter, Slaughter games, games, and four Leyline of the Void. What Slaughter Games do? Oh, it's an uncounterable Necromentia. Oh, so a sur surgical extraction effect? Yes. So the name a card, take all the copies from everywhere effect. We're playing the Necromentia to get it slightly cheaper, and we're playing the Slaughter Games 
to get it in an uncounterable fashion, mm -hmm. which might signal that Jack has trouble with the card Flage mm -hmm. and being able to take that out of the uh, counter spell deck without having to interact. But in this matchup specifically against our Frog Tide opponent, I like bringing in Leyline of the Void, but mm -hmm. maybe not all four. But then it feels weird because it's a ley line, but I really don't want to draw these. Um, I would say, yeah, if you're putting four in your sideboard and you're not boarding all four in when the opportunity presents itself, you've got too yeah. many in your sideboard. Right. Um, and it's it's kind of the ley line problem of it's only good in your opening hand. Mm -hmm. So we need to play four so we can get them all in our opener. And Jack's plan is most likely to slot those all in and hope you just never draw one. Yeah, at the very least, um, if he doesn't get one in his opening hand and decides to keep, he does play black mana. Uh, so he yes. could potentially cast that when he reaches turn four or later. Uh, but we'll head back down to the action here as players are finding their mm -hmm. starting hands. Jack mulling down to six, taking a peek ski doodle. <laughs> And an important part of the Leyline of the Void versus, say, a oh, Rest in Peace. Oh, what you got there, Clark? Is something, like, something fun? It was like it two <laughs> Fatal Pushes? Is that what I saw? I thought it was six Land Frog, but <laughs> it was a little blurry. Uh, but an it important was. part to point about Leyline of the Void versus something like Rest in Peace is Jack does have the mana. We can draw it and play it, but you won't get a exile all the cards that are already there effect, which mm. is the thing if you board in, say, a Leyline of Sanctity, gaining Hexproof at any point in time is going to help you there forward. But a Leyline of the Void will only hit the cards played after, and it might be too late. So that's big worries. That's a that's a strong point there. Both players will start with Surveillance. Jack has one naturally in his hand, and Clark will fetch his out. So he's at 19. Back to his turn. It does look like yeah, a ton of lands. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. But he does have a push. Andrew is scolding and gets a slam a frog here before Jack has time to really get anything set up. Jack will play a Cavern. Seems pretty good in this oh. matchup. And plays a Snoop. Doggy dog. He passes. Yeah, Clark's like, let me see what you got there. Oh, there it's it a ley line. Uh, yeah, Jack has a U.S. Olympic uh, friend, uh, conspicuous Snoop Dogg in play. Oh, I was like, where are you going with this Olympic <laughs> reference? <laughs> I see, I see. We we got there. Um, and you know, Clark might be leaning on this stern scolding after using <laughs> that push, but Jack very openly using this cavern of souls might spell trouble for that stern scolding. All right, we'll see if Clark begins to swing in here with an empty board for Jack. Oh, yeah, discard a fetch lane, get in there. Sure, sure. Loving it. And he did see the potential for the Warren Instigator. Um, not combo, but, you know, just the card. And yeah, yeah, the sneaky Warren Instigator. Oh. But Frog can get, can get some good damage in. He'll take yes. Jack down to 18 here and begin putting some pressure on him. And Jack does have this raucous theater, so we do have the uh, mountain need mm. if we do happen to have arena sneak in hand but we know we've now drawn this leyland of the void just a beat too late blood crypt big shocks down to 16 play for turn will be a matron and it'll be interesting quick he's loving he's <laughs> he's loving this instigator we've grabbed it twice now off these matrons it's seen the it, it just gives so much dopamine when it works yes uh, I haven't seen it yet. He's gone for it a few times on camera. Uh, and yep. I, I appreciate the hustle. I want to see it happen, too. <laughs> he walked up to me, I think, after like the very first round he played with it. And he's like, I snuck in a Kiki Jeek. And I was like, that's good enough for me. Sounds great. Yeah. Big fan. We've got the Snoop instead. Makes sense. That's going to be Jack's way to start generating card advantage against your blue-black opponent. You mm -hmm. just want more cards because they're going to try to one-for-one one everything you play. Yeah, I think he's trying to hit his land drops every turn as well. The last one he has in hand, I believe, comes in tapped. Is it the MH3? Oh, the Double? Bogart, har uh, the Bog, 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 Bog Bogart Trawler. Bog Bogart Trawler, yeah. Bog, 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 Bog. <laughs> so if Jack's going to spend the three life, we can get access to double spelling mm. or a ley line. It's a little, little sus. We'll see. Oh, but we could also just play that card out. Like, we want to attack Clark's uh, graveyard anyways. Oh, right. It does just give you that effect, and then you can play. Right. We still need the that yeah. that sacrifices uh, your potential for a fourth land. You'd have yes. to draw another one. But I think that's fine. I think that's a fine, quote-unquote, trade. <laughs> right. Concession, compromise. Because... Clark, you know, I said it last game, but we're we're on Merktide Watch right now. Mm -hmm. The every spell cast, every card surveilled gets you one step closer to paying less for a bigger dragon. We'll go to combat though with full open mana from Clark. Turn that frog sideways. It doesn't fly. At least not 
before Jack can block yeah. it, so he'll block it with the matron, take no damage, and here's the Murktide. Yeah, it, the frog wasn't flying because that was Murktide food. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We'll leave just a fetch in the grave, get a couple of counters on the Murktide. We'll pass back to Jack with two open mana. We have a 5-5 five five dragon and two power on our frog. So if Clark discards one more card to the frog, that is a two-turn clock allowing us to attack for eight and then eight again. But Jack will opt, excuse me, to, yeah. to play that Boggart Trawler we were talking about. I thought he was going to play it for land. He's <laughs> now rethinking it. Ooh, is just going to play it tapped instead? And get that Snoop. play Snoop, oh, leave a I, mana open. If I was going to play Snoop, I would have waited a moment to play my land in case I revealed a two-drop that I wanted to put the land untapped and play the two-drop with. Uh, but that Drown in the Lock, most likely, interestingly, not countering the Snoop, but instead letting Resolve, seeing the top card, and then killing it. Mm. So Clark gaining just a smidgen more information this way. Allows Jack to gain that information as well. Mm. Oh, I think Clark's going to do... Discard, spell, snare, grow. Discard, land, grow. Yes. And now Clark can eat these three spells to give the frog flying and give plus three counters to the Murktide. Yep. So munch, munch, munch. That has flying, but three more counters on this Murktide. Yeah, flying irrelevant. The The important part is the counters that Murktide gets. The synergy between these two cards is so huge. Yeah. Eight plus five, that's 13. Jack down to three. Oh, man. Okay, big big rips for Jack. Yeah. Big rips. Here we go. Well, we already know what's on top of his deck. We oh sure goodness. Do. <laughs> I think that might be a little bit more than a goblin deck mm -hmm. can handle at this point in time. Yeah. All right. Yep. That game will go to Clark. We'll head to a game three here. This I like calling this deck, you know, Frog Tide, because it is just these two cards are a supreme backbone to this shell of a deck that is otherwise just kill spells, counter spells, and hand disruption. Mm -hmm. Cards like Drown in the Lock get to pull double duty. And then he's like, oh, this card's not very good. I'll just feed it to the frog and draw some new ones. Mm -hmm. Is just sick. Yeah, there were there were cards that Clark didn't need in his hand at that time. Jack, you know, was playing a single spell for turn. Mm -hmm. He knew that he could get uh, him dead pretty quickly and just fed them to the creatures on the field in yep. a, a couple different ways there. And one of the things I like about the frog is it can allow Clark to board in sideboard cards mm -hmm. that will sometimes be ineffective, say something like a stern scolding, but Jack's been using Vial the whole game, and you have an outlet to turn it into a different piece of resource. We got so used to that when we saw like Fable of the Mirror Breaker a mm -hmm. lot, that it's like, oh, well, I brought this card in, I don't quite have a use for it. I can pitch and turn in something new. Here we get to turn it into power and possible card draw in the form of the frog. Yeah, I think that's where a, a blue-black deck might struggle the most, actually, yeah. is just pure um, combat damage. And mm -hmm. so they're actually able to turn their card advantage into power. Yeah, it allows these this one-two punch Ooh. as Jack Drew's ley line. Ooh, I see. I see it <laughs> pulling it to the front there in his hand, looking at a couple munitions experts, yeah. some lands. He'll keep it. Clark will keep seven as well. Pre-game effects. <laughs> Leyline of the Void into play. All right, question for Clark. Do you have even a Brazen Borrower or something to try to interact with this Leyline? Are we going to try to Three munitions way? experts, excuse me. Thought Seas will show Clark all three of those, a Goblin Matron and a land. Imagine if this was Is It Murktide? <laughs> and they went, okay, uh, Ragavan pass. And Jack went, pop, shoot it. And they go, okay, DRC pass. Pop, shoot it, this <laughs> expert. And instead, Clark gets to spend this game interacting playing a frog frog is very good against red base removal because you can ditch cards to keep it mm -hmm. kind of turning those cards in hand into counter spells as you know the damage doesn't kill your creature i'd call i call it um a, a combat trick or like a buff yeah spell. yeah exactly yeah. all right jack's got these munitions expert and he drew did he draw another matron what's that red card no that's the a trash snoop. master oh it's a trash master thank you thank you um but interestingly did not shock so we don't have interest in flashing in one of these experts on end step and instead holding to gain full value from them. Indeed. I think he, he puts Clark pretty uh, intelligently on a turn yep. two frog and knows that that's not going to do anything for him. We're getting Survey a land. That's a big land drop. He drew that for turn. He's going to grab that raucous theater very, very quickly and try and gain him some more momentum in this game. Let's get raucous. <laughs> let's party. Everyone, let's party. Now, 
this munition expert, the first one will only get to deal one damage because there's nothing here yet. Mm -hmm. And the second one will try to deal two, but Clark's Clark. going to be able to use the cards in hand like this subtlety we just drew mm -hmm. and try to fight back. Got a counter spell proper in his hand. We'll drown on the lock another frog. Jack is going for flash, damage, block, and kind of trading this expert for fogging the damage this turn and taking a card from Clark. Because right. this way, Clark has to discard a card from hand. Clark won't draw a card, and Jack's not taking any damage. So he's recontextualizing this munition expert to mean all of those things and then send it to the yard. Clark will discard a subtlety to grow the frog. Blocks will leave no damage to Jack, but will clear up the munitions expert. Back on his turn, found another land. You can mm. play two munitions experts now. Ooh. And I'm seeing this trash master, and I'm wondering what its thoughts and targets are. <laughs> Jack going for the same play again. Yeah, after Clark begins combat swinging with the frog, one munitions expert. <laughs> All right, shoot it for one. Right. And then I'm like to shoot it for two. And if Clark responds here and kills one of these, it'll only do one damage. He will counter it, I believe. I would hope so. There we go. We'll counter it instead and get our block on. Same deal, right? We're trading for cards in Clark's hand. We're blocking. We're fogging damage. And we're making sure Clark doesn't draw cards either. Mm -hmm. But Jack done a one card left in hand. And it's the trash man. I was saying we were trading cards with Clark, but Clark has five cards left, so I don't know if we did trade too much. Mm. <laughs> trash man. Yeah, I think Jack's hand was ley line draw into the rest of our game plan. Because three munitions experts mm. haven't really done anything except keep the life total healthy. Here comes a classic discussion. Okay. When playing sideboard games... Mm. You can't just have disruption, can't just have pressure. You need your disruption and your pressure, right? This was very effective in, like, when you were getting Blood Mooned all the time. It's mm -hmm. like, you can't just play Blood Moon and wait. Your opponent will eventually figure it out. You need to, like, slam your disruptive piece and then start applying pressure. So Jack had a very disruptive piece here in this Leyland of the Void, and it's going to make things difficult for Clark. But Clark's going to slowly have time to claw out of it while Jack's putting themselves deeper into a hole. Yeah, the tricky thing about Psychic Frog is that it doesn't need the graveyard to get sure bigger. Doesn't. Unlike Murktide, uh, you can just grow it with the cards in your hand. Um, Jack still has outs here. Like I said, life total very healthy. Just a little guy for Clark. Mm -hmm. This is slowly, very, very slowly getting bigger. Yeah, if I was Clark, I think I want to get this to a 4-4 four, four Frog so I can really start pushing... Uh, Jack's life total down. Here's that <laughs> Bogart. Uh, uh -huh. I will exile your graveyard. Yeah, I'm sure not exiling mine, but I'm blocking with this 3-1. Mm -hmm. Is there any recursion from a Goblin's deck? Recursion? Well, yeah. You're saying no. like he, he doesn't want to target his own graveyard. Oh. Is there any benefit to maintaining the graveyard? Oh, actually. Can you? Can, you, can we pull up uh, this Bogart friend? Because... If we can target a graveyard, mm -hmm. I think it would be correct for Jack to target himself to shut down Clark's Drown in the Locks. Ooh, there you go. That's a great That's a great answer. I like that. So we're going to check the text on this card, see if it matters. I still target my graveyard. I, yeah. All I, right. It's funny, haha, to say I target you. I would have targeted myself. <laughs> I would have targeted myself. All right. There you go. A little, little bit of uh, tech there. I know Jack likes to review all his games, so... Yeah, shout out Future Jack. Mm -hmm. Big blocks. It's so hard, right, because each piece that Jack is playing to try to start applying pressure to Clark keeps getting thrown in front of the frog because mm. Clark is so many cards ahead, and we just can't let him get even more cards ahead. I don't think you block here, man. I think you got to start building a board. Yeah, it it's rock meets hard place, and <laughs> it's not getting easier. But Snoop, card advantage yeah. this deck does have, and we've just ripped it off the top. I know. I just really want to see him have, like, a cavern, though. Oh, cavern be good, too, because this might just run right into what a blue-black deck does best. Oh, it will resolve, though. Both players will see a sling game lieutenant on top. Pew! Oh, okay. 
Yeah, use the Sling Gang's <laughs> ability, shoot for one, yeah. in, in the spite of this fatal push, in the face of this fatal push. Great, great check, Aviva. Great check, Jack. Sorry, Clark. Down to 13, swing with a now clear board to bring Jack to 15. Perfect time for Clark to draw this dark slick short. Just slam the end of light tap, move on with your life. And now counter spell yeah. comes for the sling gang. Mm -hmm. I was about to say, oh, Jack will finally have more than one creature mm. on board at a time. Yeah, the sling gang would really help with the blocking game, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. Clark's gone this whole game without playing a counter spell. It was bound to be time. Had to, had to have drawn one by now, right? Right. Between the stern scoldings and the counterspell propers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And Jack's just going to draw, cast the spell. Draw, cast the spell. Yeah, big creature density in a goblin deck. Hit a couple lands in a row, but uh, just... The subtlety. This allows Clark to uh, put more of a clock in play and top, deal with it. Back on top? Because it, it is it is two creatures. It's two creatures. Yes, the second creature is a Skirk Prospector, if he still got him, and that's it. No, I'm saying the Goblin Matron uh, represents two creatures. Yeah, I meant the only one on our current mana we could search for and find to be a one-drop. Mm, mm -hmm. If we wanted to try to put both in play, you're talking tutor it up, it equals two pieces of cardboard. Yeah, because you just need, you know, draw top being in top deck mode is just so... The worst. Yeah. <laughs> the worst. And my opponent is a counterspell base deck with a huge clock in play? Mm. Uh-oh. Little surveil action gone forever into the abyss. Don't even seen. get to don't don't even get to know what it is. But he didn't want it. We'll draw an island to hand instead. And push. <laughs> uh, by that I mean push for damage. We have six here. Jack's at twelve. This is an exact two turn clock. Big thumbs up. Take the <laughs> damage down to six. Yeah, the combat will draw you. The uh, I have no blocks. You are active player. Do you want to discard any cards? No. Is not an active player like to move to damage. And there's Patrick Mons and the game oh. going to Clark. The disruptive piece was there <laughs> for Jack, but the rest of the deck did not cooperate. Triple munitions expert just weren't enough. Yeah, Jack points out that Leyland at the end of the game, you know, I had that, right? Just sure couldn't did. get anything else going there in the face of all the cards in Clark's hand and the interaction that he had. So our number two on the leaderboard, Clark, will win his first match of the night, taking down another top eight finisher in Jack. And his Goblins deck, before we head into uh, round two, we'll take a quick look at our weekly schedule. We have lots of different ways that you can game at Nerd Rage Gaming. We support five games and their organized play. That would be Magic, Digimon, Lorcana, Pokemon, and One Piece. Jeez. Soon to be adding uh, Union Arena. And we're also going to be doing an Altered Road Show, which I should be posting oh. about in the next couple of days here. Shout out Justin Parnell. Yeah, really. I have, I'm in love with Altered. Big, big <laughs> fan of it. And uh, so we'll be checking that out as well. But here is all the different ways that you can play. I'll point out that we have Shimmering Skies for Lurkana releasing this Friday. We have the ETBs for uh, Shrouded Fable releasing for Pokemon this week. Next week will be the Booster Bundles. Uh, we just came out with Seeker Crisis for Digimon. So many different products sheesh, to buy. Sheesh. So many different games to play. Check us out. NerdRageGaming.com. We're in Buffalo Grove, Illinois. We'll be right back for round two, folks. Stay tuned. See you soon. Bye. Welcome back, folks. We're in round two, Wednesday Night Modern here at the Nerd Rage Gaming Storefront. We got Rich and Andres bringing you a little spice from the 01 bracket. We got Turns versus Eldrazi Breach. Oh, yeah. I always get so confused, and I love it when a player plays Eldrazi Breach because my brain is so wired to Underworld Breach mm -hmm. that I have forgotten about Through the Breach. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and that is an infinitely different card to pair with your Eldrazi. Absolutely. Both red cards. So there's that. You're right. You're right. The red cards love the breach. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Sure. Right. <laughs> well, we'll get uh, Andres through his quick pile shuffle here, and then we'll get going. Well, maybe we should explain the turns deck. Oh yeah. It's. It, I don't. I don't know how familiar people are with this deck. I wasn't when I looked at it earlier. All right. We're looking at a mono blue deck out of Richard here, based around the cards that allow you to take extra turns. We're talking uh, time warp mm -hmm. and temporal mastery and possibly even going up as far as part the water veil. All cards that simply say take an extra turn mm -hmm. and usually have their own little piece of spice to go with them. Like a temporal mastery has a uh, miracle or part the water veil has awaken. Like there's going to be other kind of set mechanics tacked onto them. Richard's plan is to use blue cards. Mm -hmm. to make Andres take as few game actions as possible. <laughs> spells like tapping his mana down, returning cards to his hand, countering spells. 
then Richard is going to try to put a value piece in play, say something like a Howling Mine or Dictative Crucifix to draw extra cards each turn, mm-hmm. and then try to start taking all of the turns. So you can take all the turns, draw all the cards, <laughs> and then use something like, I don't know, a single Snapcaster Mage. But if you have all of the turns, it gets to attack 10 times. Exactly, yeah. It, you don't need big creatures if you have all the time mm-hmm. in the world. Because let's say you're taking all of the turns, you've got it set up, you can use a bounce spell, slowly remove all the blockers, and that Snapcaster will eventually end the game. As well as there's a Jace Wielder of Mysteries. If you're familiar with Thassa's Oracle, this is the Planeswalker version of that effect. Or the, I, w- I would say it's a, a laboratory lab maniac. maniac. Yeah. Uh, but it's a lab maniac that can enable itself mm-hmm. because you can mm-hmm. use uh, its plus or its minus abilities. So it kind of splits the diff, right? Between sure. Thassa's Oracle triggering itself and Lab Man being naked. Mm hmm. Agreed. Uh, Rich will start us off. Your first spell cast will be from Andres, though, in a Kozilex command. Oh. (laughs) Rich gives it the okay to resolve. Fun fact about Kozilex command, we were also used to K command being Kolagon's command, Uh and then K command becoming Kozilex command, but now Kolagon's command is starting to creep back into decks, Right, and we're going to reach the point where you will have to explain which K command you're playing. Yeah, magic players love their shortcuts, and uh, sometimes, you know, there's there's reason for that because Mm -hmm. there is so much magic, or so much... So many words in magic, so right? You, you have to shortcut somewhere, but uh, like sometimes I, you do have to bring in the full word into your com- into your speech. Right? I know they shortened it to enters for Bloomboro for mm-hmm. enters the battlefield effects. Yes, sir. But I'm probably going to say ETB until the end of times because it still feels shorter to my brain. Oh, absolutely. I mean, when I was first started doing commentary, I harped a lot as we see Rich play Dictate of Crufix here. I harped a lot on the shortcutting and the sort of linguistic... Mm-hmm. I called it gatekeeping almost it's that commentators so hard, do. Right? Yeah. You, it, it's just, you know, when you've played Magic for as long as we have, you know, decades at, uh, combined between <laughs> the two of us. Yes. Um, it, it's just, you know, years and years of habit breaking that you have mm-hmm. to do um, to make, you know, Magic as accessible as possible, yes. right? Saying Dragon's Rage Channeler instead of DRC. DRC. Or then saying Darcy. It's like I've gone two layers deep. Right, now. exactly. Uh, like or like when you say when you call uh, when you say Fruit Loops and that means <laughs> Nadu, <laughs> sure, right? right? Everyone knows that. Yeah. Uh, recently, I've started calling uh, Nadu not breakfast but lunch and dinner. <laughs> lunch and dinner. Yeah. <laughs> it just feels right. As uh, Richard, very importantly to his deck, you saw the Dictator Crew Fist, but it was played at flash speed. Mm. Allows him kind of sneak it out at the end of Andre's turn, but then keep up all of the mana to try to interact. As we're seeing cards like Cryptic Command and Remand in the hand for Richard. Is this um, sewing Myco Spawn for it Andres is. on the field? Can you remind me what that card does? So when it is cast, you may kick it. Mm hmm. No matter what, when you cast it, you get to search for a land and put it into play. And if you kick it, you get to destroy one of your opponent's lands. Any land or non-basic? That's a great question. We're looking at exile target land. Period. Okay. D- exile, too. Yeah. Not even destroy. Yes. The Eldrazi love the exile. Right. But what's going on here is Richard has this handful of counterspells. Mm-hmm. Andres has gone sewing micro spawn to sewing micro spawn. Eldrazi love their cast triggers, and counter spells hate cast triggers. In addition to that, Andres also has a cavern of souls uh, mm-hmm. on Eldrazi, as you can see by that little handwritten note there, which does a really good job at preventing yes. uh, creature spells from getting countered. Very important thing happening here: the Ugin's Labyrinth that Andres found. Had an Emrakul, the Aeon's Torn, put under it. Mm. Remember, Andres is not just playing Eldrazi, but Eldrazi Breach. And if we attempt to throw the Breach in Ulamog, mm. it will track this Emrakul in exile under the Labyrinth and give it Annihilator 15. Excuse me? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, part of this Eldrazi Breach deck is using the new Ulamog, the Defiler, alongside the inherent cost mm-hmm. of Ugin's Labyrinth to exile a card. Well, that puts that card in exile to be seen by the Ulamog when it's breached. Back on Rich's turn, he used a cryptic command on Andres' turn, tap down his stuff, draw stuff. Now he's back on his turn, has played his first extra turns card in Time Warp, and will potentially begin to start doing the thing. Yes, you will also possibly hear someone refer to these Time Warp effects as an explore, as we cost cast an exhaustion, which says that Andres is, skips their untap step, mm-hmm. a.k.a. All of those cards are not untapping, so... You basically get a draw. Oh, yep. and explore. Right. So you can play that land for turn, but that's all he's going to get. Right. Um, and you'll you'll hear uh, some people refer to when Richard's casting Time Walks here as explores. Because mm. if you use all of your mana to take an extra turn and do nothing else, you untap and draw a card and mm-hmm. play a new land, right? Mm-hmm. 
So it's the most roundabout way to draw a card and play <laughs> a land. Right. But what Richard's doing is combining it with these extra draw effects. So every time where Richard calls, plays is drawing three cards, not mm -hmm. just one. Right, because he's got the Dictate and the Howling Mind. We'll play another Time Warp here. Andres <laughs> has, I would say, no interaction in his deck no. for this kind of effect, right? No counter spells. Um, his his interaction is turning things sideways and killing you and uh, sacrificing and right. exiling your stuff. And you saw Richard there draw the first card this turn very slowly. That's the Miracle Check. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And here's a Time Warp after a Howling Mind. So Richard will take another turn and draw four cards on this turn. Indeed. First one going to be land and then he'll draw three more <laughs> just generating a mountain of cards in hand does dictate give you no hand hand limit no we'll have to make sure we check that <laughs> okay yeah uh he's drawn he's been drawing a lot of cards i know he's playing lands and and spells every turn but we'll make sure all right Andres, <laughs> Andres doesn't want to play anymore Andres board. let's go uh, i love it <laughs> the, that is the turns deck right especially uh we're gonna see cards in richard's deck like Boomerang that can return a permanent to play a permanent. Yeah, let's get that let's get that deck on on screen here, folks. So we're looking at cards, Snapcaster Mages and Jace Wielder of Mystery. Those three cards, those are the ones that can actually win the game. Mm -hmm, then mm -hmm. you're looking at cards like Giga Drows that tap permanents, Serum Vision to just try to like look at cards. Boomerang can bounce any permanent that includes a land. Mm -hmm. Remanding. And then we see these exhaustions that we use to keep our opponent tapped down. Along say Cryptic Command and then these extra turn spells and those draw cards. So it's just everything I said before <laughs> of I'm going to try to draw as many as I can while you don't get any, and then I'm going to start taking turns. We are looking at the deck list right now, and this is the exact 75 that Richard is playing. Yeah, for folks looking for a command that'll get you the deck list, the best thing to do is use the socials command and join us in the Discord. That's where you can talk to all the players and get uh, access to links to their decks. Um, but this is the list that uh, is being featured right now on, on camera. So you can see the whole thing right there. Use exclamation point social or socials, <laughs> and that'll get you the link to our Discord. Uh, but we'll take a look at his sideboard here. A lot of counter spells, consign a memory, dispel, spell, snare, stern scolding, counter spell. Then we've also got Tamio the Moon Sage out of Avison Restored. I don't know the text on that card. Yeah, the Tamio the Moon Sage, the original Tamio, and this bad mammer jammer in Tamio the Moon Sage. <laughs> Plus, this to tap permits says they don't untap. Plays very much so into this style of lockdown. The minus two is drawing a card for each tapped creature target player controls. So if you tap your opponent down a bunch, you get to draw those cards. And a minus eight is no max hand size. And whenever a card is put in your graveyard, return it to your hand. Oh, my goodness. And Richard has said that that card is for... <clears throat> The grindy matchup. <laughs> the grindy matchup, just like flexslot.gg. Right. <laughs> right? Hashtag kind of sponsored. Hashtag kind of. And so really it is flavor to taste for Richard here on which of this counter magic possible interest in. No matter what, I'm snapping off three consigned to memory. This card is designed to help you fight back against the Eldrazi decks. Yeah, like you were saying earlier, um, counter spell decks do not like cast triggers, but fortunately consigned to memory can deal with that kind of stuff because exactly. it is a triggered effect. Uh, we'll take a look at a Through the Breach deck as well. This has not been submitted uh, by Andres, but it is one we've pulled off of MTG Goldfish. We'll give you a, a pretty decent framework for what he's working with yeah. here. We see a lot of the cards that he was playing earlier, and we'll take a look at what he might be bringing in from the sideboard. We've got Thought Not Seer, World Breaker, Breaker of Creation, Dismember, Trinosphere, and Bajuko Bog. Bajuko Bog. Bajuko Bog. Yeah, so at minimum, I feel like... Uh, I like Trinosphere. No, yeah. no. It's hard because we're casting big five mana and six mana sorceries. That I guess he's also yeah. Whoa. Oh wait, Trina. The, sorry, I'm yeah. think I'm thinking of Defense Grid. Excuse me. Yeah. That's the other one. Um, we want maybe World Breaker, so we can go after some mana. Mm -hmm. Maybe Thought Not Series to try to just like snap a, a card disruption. or two out of hand. Yeah, I yeah. like that. We'll head back down to the action here though, because this isn't Andre's exact list, so. We don't want to make too many assumptions about what he'll bring. He'll be no. bringing in or taking out. He will be on the play for game two. It looks like Rich is taking his first mulligan. Yeah, we uh we get to play my favorite game of is that a sideboard card? <laughs> uh, so we'll we'll play along at home for folks for uh, Andres's deck. If uh, play something that feels a little out of the ordinary, might just be a sideboard card. Andres, start off, land, go, <laughs> Rich. We'll say land, go, but then in his upkeep. 
tap Giga that down. Drows. Giga Drows. no replicate to tap down the Eldrazi Temple. Doing that same thing as we saw in the first game with the <laughs> exhaustion. Kind of just using your game actions to ensure that your opponent does not take any. Because Richard needs a couple of turns to set up. He he does. He's got some big spells that he has to play. Giga Drows is the cheapest in the deck at a single mana. <laughs> right. And it allows Richard to tra trade one for one on mana source for mm -hmm. mana source. But then untap and actually use theirs. Ooh, we do see a Thought Not Seer come down for Andres. But Rich has Remand. two mana up and we'll put that back into his hand. Mm. It's like, mm -mm. Give, me an give me another turn. I need another land drop, sir. And very importantly, Thought Not Seer, one of the few Eldrazi that is not a cast trigger. Mm -hmm. So no effect there. And Richard using the exhaustion to lock down Andres on a very pivotal five, six mana turn that would have happened there. Yeah, Andres will play a land in Ugin's Labyrinth, tuck an Emrakul underneath. Oh, didn't, this makes a face like he's misplayed. <laughs> I don't know exactly what the misstep there will be. He keeps his hand real close to his chest. Yeah, might have been needing that Emrakul in hand for a breach, but we're going to find out if Andres ever takes a turn again. Mm-hmm. Howling Mine will be the first cast for Rich. A little extra mana went, there. Went to tap something. Thinking and we'll Take it back it and pass by. it back with two blue mana up. Oh, what could it possibly be? It's just two blue mana. <laughs> it, there's a lot of a lot of uh, uh two mana, two mana blue spells. Oh, yes. There's a couple different plays Rich could have here. Andres think... gets to draw two from the Howling Mine. Maybe find some oh. some good spells to play. I think Rich is holding up the boomerang here. That if Andres does through the breach something, Richard can just bounce it mm. and just make it next turn's problem, <laughs> and then uh, find out if there ever is a next turn. Indeed, indeed. All right, Andres, first spell for the turn. Take Will a look at your thoughts. That thought, see, thought not seer once more. Once more. Three cards in hand for Rich. Rich's hand is running out of gas. We're gonna use the boomerang to bounce this. And then Richard will draw a card from the Thought Not Seer leaving, and then we will resolve the Thought Not ETV. Interesting. Yup. Yup, yup. And now we're seeing the Snapcaster, the so Dictator, Crucifix, and an Island. Andres gets to draw a card then, right? Because it le left the battlefield? No, no, Richard draws the card. Oh, target opponent draws a card. Excuse me, excuse me. Yeah, it'll eventually replace what, it, what was taken, but mm. not the exact card and said a new card. But what happens with these being separate text boxes is mm -hmm. when the card was bounced, Richard drew the card, mm -hmm. and then the first part resolved, so Andre saw that extra card. In this case, it was that island allows us to snatch mm -hmm. the Snapcaster Mage away. I think Rich just trying to filter through his deck a little bit more there. Yes. I'm unsure what the exact play was there, because now Andre gets the Thought Not Seer again if he wants. Yes, that is correct. He's got four mana available. Could rip the, the Dictate as well. Eric, the question is, do you want it? Dictate's not the strongest card in the deck. Mm -hmm. um, it does. It is part of the engine, though. Ooh, and if you're Richard, you could untap, flash in the Dictate, draw three cards for the turn, mm. and then try to draw two mana interaction to yeah. go with your untapped mana in your land per turn. That's the weakest part of Howling Mine, right? Is that the turn, your, your opponent gets the extra draw before you do. Right, but Dictate has the flash, which could allow you to kind of negate that by flashing it in and being the first to draw. Because mm -hmm, you can flash it in at your upkeep, like you said, or your opponent's end step. Right, and here's uh, Kozilek's command. Using Eldrazi Temple, X equals two. Looks like two little guys, and maybe some card selection is indeed. That, that definitely, that was the modes he picked last time as well. There are four modes. Typically with modal spells, you'll see modes more commonly used yeah. than others. The I've seen the Scions, the Scry Draw, and the Removal used the most on this. And then when you really need it, you're so thankful the Graveyard Removal. Absolutely, there. yeah. It, all the modes are important. There's just some that, you know. Oh, yeah. Uh, more have more utility, right? Ma yeah, make a bunch of guys draw a card. Just helps you filter through. Nets a bunch of mana to untap next turn. The Yeah, the, the tokens are so important to the mm -hmm. game plan. It allows you... Have an you deck. Yeah, let's say you're stuck with an Ulamog in hand. Mm -hmm. You can just dump five and it make five scions. Untap, suddenly you have ten mana. You slam your big monster. Here comes the third cast of this Thought Not Seer. We'll get remanded for a second time. But Andres has Land Land and this Ugin's Labyrinth can recast it once again. And Richard with Land Land Dictator Crew Fix might just cast it and just have a handful of lands to show to the Thought Knot. Indeed. 
A little bit of flooding. A little bit of flooding from the, the Mono Island deck. Right, just from all these islands. At least they match. I could not watch a Mono Blue deck if all of them were like atrociously, hideously different. Yeah, I, I really I think it's fun to mix some non full arts and uh Okay. And and full arts. I think sure. that's I think that's kinda neat. It's it's I believe I, I, I did I take it back though, because I did have to deal with in my seal <laughs> deck last now. night on on Arena. I've bought only the full art Kamigawa planes. You don't get the <laughs> full set of ten when you purchase them. You get you have to buy each one individually. So I had the full art planes, but then my mountains were non full arts. They Oops. were just like Bloomboro basics. Well, not bad. No, the f the I, but you have to buy the full arts. <laughs> right. Yeah. And Andre's deep, deep in the tank here. I mean, he's. He's struggling. I, I think this this mm. is not a great matchup for him. Uh, Rich has a lot of things to deal with what Andres is trying to do. The Nazi here for a fourth time. Flash it in. Again. Show him an empty grip. Wow. And Richard right. now going to get to draw three cards. We have access to five, six mana on our turn. Mm -hmm. We need to find a turn. We need to yeah. Start. Big need rips. To Big need rips here. Even maybe the miracle? Ooh. It is. Oh, my gosh. Wow. And, and uh, what a rip! This green die is turns in the bank. So right now there's just one turn in the bank. But oh my God, so many lands still. So Once, many lands. But he's drawn memory. three. Okay, here he goes. One, <laughs> two, two, a three. three. <laughs> and that's the island. We drew a part the water veil or a temporal mastery. There is another turn spell. We're Here's gonna the use. Cast. We're gonna use. <laughs> Oh, oh man. Andres just doesn't want to play anymore. doesn't want to let Rich do his thing. He's, <laughs> okay. It's like, don't worry. You don't need all of the turns. Maybe We're he good. was frustrated because he, he did make that face earlier about the labyrinth. Maybe mm -hmm. he just felt like he, he's mis he's misstepped enough and he doesn't want to sit yep. here and get punished for it. Yep. Uh, Just used our Emrakul instead of our World Breaker. Didn't have access to the big hammer that was breaching in the Emrakul. And understanding when you're beat, taking a time to give yourself a moment. We can mm -hmm. understand. All right, we'll head into our backup match here. They're gone. They're done. They're done. Oh, they're just chatting. Oh, they're just chatting. Oh goodness, folks. Oh, we're we... trying to get you as much magic as possible. I'm gonna go scout real quick. Sure. I'm gonna chat to the folks. Yeah, let's talk about Madison. Folks, if you enjoy playing competitive magic and winning lots of money, there's a great way for you to do that. In just a couple of weeks, we've actually updated this graphic, or updated the event since this graphic was made. Saturday is now a two main event day. Modern has been changed to a 5K, and we've added Bloomboro Sealed in addition. So if you are unhappy with the state of Modern right now, you can play some Bloomboro, which I will be doing. I'm very, very excited for that. Or you, you and two buddies can join us on Sunday for Team Trios. Legacy, Modern, and Standard will be the formats for that. Uh, both Modern and Team Trios are showdown. So if you win either of those events, you automatically qualify for our, excuse me, 24-player $35,000 championship event, the winner of which goes to the Pro Tour. You automatically make money when you qualify for that event. And when you do, you also get a token, custom token from Inkling Customs. You can receive some of these tokens by playing in our events as well. We have great ones such as uh, the Matt Hoey Goat, the Dom Harvey Mana uh, Floating Mana Counter, the Team Trios Construct. Let me think, what else have we got in this year? Mm -mm -mm. Nikachu. Assumed to be Merfolk has not been released yet. I don't know if we'll have that in time for Madison. Keep an eye out on socials for that. But if you win, you get to pick your own. There's tons you can pick. You can pick a repeat or you can make your own unique one that we will use on feature. So get uh, get remembered in the history of the Energy series by winning one of those events. We're going to go to a quick break while Dom finds a match. We'll be right back. Stay tuned.
Welcome back, folks. We found another match for you. We got Sam on Hammer rocking the Energy Series sleeves and Bill on Jeskai. I assume Energy? Maybe Jeskai just... Energy. Kind of the classic control yeah. deck. For sure. So we'll get going here. Sam will start us off on game two with the Urza Saga into Lava Spur Boots. Pretty interesting start for a Hammer deck. Usually you see a Cigar to Zade on t oh, I mean, you don't really see Urza Saga on mm -hmm. turn one ever. Because right. you can't get mana quickly enough to get constructs out of it before it uh, sacrifices. But the card is very good against Jeskai. Mm. I will say, used to be. Wrath of the Skies has made life very difficult. But this seems like Sam is running out the saga to get access to its tutoring ASAP. Totally. As Although, that's usually the target you go for. Shadow Spear will be the second spell of the game. Excuse me. Go ahead. No, I'm, I'm with you. I think we're just trying to push through as many cheap spells as we can while the Jeskai player is trying to get set up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And no tune the narrative means uh, we're not going to get Wrath of the Sky done turn number two just yet. That's good, because there's a lot of lot of uh, good stuff to hit with the Wrath of the Skies right now. Yes. Uh, if uh, Bill was able to take the three for one and leave Sam with a single land, it would be very difficult for this game to find uh, more purchase. But instead, uh, a game is going to be played at least a little bit here. Mm -hmm. We got some more good magic for you, friends. If there's any matchups or decks that you want to see on coverage as well, be sure to ask in chat. We have a pretty diverse metagame in the building, and uh, because we're not in uh, league play anymore, we're more willing to, you know, put on some spice and show show mm. off a little bit more of uh, the the interesting decks that Modern has to offer. Doing a quick float off the Urza Saga here for Sam. Going a searching. More taking <laughs> turns. Yeah, not a not a bad choice. Not a bad choice. We would have seen we would have seen um, Rich take some more turns if Andres, um, <laughs> you know, felt felt like sticking around for a little bit more. But I think he had had enough. He saw he saw enough turns get taken. How many players are in the current event? I think we have twenty four or five. Classic NRG weekday on a Wednesday, folks. Big shout out to everybody for coming in and playing. Mm -hmm. And Sam doing here what I was wondering is going to happen. Grabbing Shuko. Just giving kind of the impression that ever so close mm. to slamming a Nadu and trying to get to work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When you see that Shuko, you know that bird's not far behind. <laughs> Even in a hammer deck where you have a lot of other things and, and a lot of other equipments, mm. I think Nadu is like a one or two of. It's a three of. Oh, dang. Okay. You got to right. draw it to try it. You got to draw it. We'll see a pure steel paladin making all of these equipments into a Shuko. That's right. It makes everybody is Shuko. That's the power of trying to play it in the hammer deck mm -hmm. is it already coincides with your main game plan while giving you a very strong backup to draw a lot of cards. So what this allows is Sam to kind of dedicate a lot of this early turn playing your cards out, knowing that you might be able to find a very <laughs> powerful post uh, plan after the fact. All right, Sam will begin to tack <laughs> equipments onto the pure steel. Allowing Bill a priority window to respond to each of these. He'll get the boots and the, the gloves on, and then we'll mm -hmm. give him a weapon to hold as well. Yeah, and I think before the spear, Bill might be going for a, a Galvanic Discharge paying the ward. Because mm -hmm. um, right now, the creature is a 3-3, three, three, mm -hmm. but if we add the spear, it'd be a 4-4. Four, four. So this is Bill's last moment to spend all the energy, pay for the ward, and kill off this paladin. Sam still has a floating and or floating mana from the saga there, as well. There is a Nadu in hand. Oh man! But no green mana. No, no. Very important. This is an Azorius hammer deck. Do, I, do they, does he? I assume he has to play some sort of green land, right? It can't yep. just be Springleaf Drum. There are Temple Gardens and Springleaf Drums. Okay. Bump. So there are some options there. Three equipment on the field for Sam. Two lands for Bill. And. A bit of energy as well. Oh, just that's a, a fun one. What's that token? <laughs> it just says token. It just. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and here's a hammer to go alongside it. There else. you go. Wow. Look at that. What uh, a field. All all these toys and uh, nobody <laughs> to play with them. No, no. We'll go back to Bill's turn here. See what he has in store for us. It'll probably be a land go, as is a control player's typical game plan. Mm -hmm. And if they're not land going, they're playing Flage, and that's even worse for you. Oh, Flage is a real good card. He will play a Sacred Foundry tap, pass back to Sam. Sam will find a green source. Here comes oh, the Temple man. Garden. I'm re ready. Vulcan Baga sign. There it is. <laughs> Temple Garden. He'll declare the Nadu onto the stack <laughs> while he shuffles, and Bill will throw down the counter spell. 
I love the counter spell before the spells on the stack. I mean, I think I think Bill's pretty aware of what's about to happen. <laughs> you see the Shuko, you see the green mana, the blue mana. You know what's about to happen. You know what's about to happen. It's done. It's countered in the yard. There goes the bird. Fruit Loops. <laughs> Old Toucan Sam mm -hmm. Gonzo. And Bill drawing Supreme Verdict. Not even the RCQ promo one. Come on, they've been up for three days. For a whole, Come yeah, on, you've had Bill. a whole weekend to go and get one, <laughs> sir. Oh, Excuse man. Me. Ooh. Z Z one ring. That's now, a good one. The Nadu would have been good for Sam, allowing Sam to kind of keep parity with this one ring and mm -hmm. not being so dedicated to just getting in there for big damage. But Bill gets to have the card advantage, the cards in hand advantage, the engine advantage, and Sam ain't even got a guy to give all the weapons to. I know there's so many equipment on the field right now. One that equips for free, too, so you could spend all your mana. Uh, to play out creatures at this point. But Bill is now going to get into the part of the game <laughs> that he likes to be in. Lots of resources at his disposal. Consigned to memory will be mm -hmm. the draw for turn, which seems to be huge so It counters against all the hammer these, deck. All the colorless spells, and even if something slips by you, you could counter like the cigar as a trigger. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Sam's hand, another hammer, and the paradise mantle. So just Ooh, more and more and more equipment. Oh, <laughs> Paradise Mantle too! My goodness. Yes, the Paradise Mantle can. Yeah, what 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 are you untapping? Uh, this is uh Paradise Mantle turns your creatures into a Birds of Paradise. What am I think? I'm thinking Paradise Mantle. You think Umbral Mantle? Maybe that's it. I the think commander right. card that untaps for three mana. I'm thinking of like the leg, the Merfolk Legacy, yep, freaking yep, that yep, thing. Yep, yep. Yeah. Uh, this one is kind of Springleaf Drum number four mm -hmm. that is an equipment that if you have it and the boots and a Pure Stew Paladin, turns all of your creatures into Birds of Paradise with haste. And when you're not doing off, allows you to actually m generate mana through all your creatures. Does Paradise Mantle have that really pretty, like, pastel secret layer? Sure does. Yeah. The, the like, cool chicks in mm -hmm. Japan one? Yeah. Yeah. I dig that card real, real good. That's See not the one Sam's playing, but. <laughs> no, no, no. Sam's got a really nice deck, though. He's very, very blinged out, <laughs> for sure. Uh, Sam is, I think, uh, hanging around for the camera. I appreciate that. Drew... He's, he's always he's always a homie in that regard. <laughs> Sam drew another hammer. So oh, my gosh. Here. So you hate to see it. Give, give something. <laughs> these All yeah. these equipment. My goodness. It's the full armory, but not a single <laughs> knight. Can we open the armory? That makes creatures, right? No, that just finds more equipment. <laughs> equipment Never tutor, mind. Yeah. Uh, whatever. And... Ooh. Are you trying to flage off this island? What are you doing? Filtering it through that Cascade Bluff using the Arena of Glory? Just play another ring? Yeah, sure. no problem. Whatever. Why not? What's the worst that could happen to you? New ring? New me? Who dis? <laughs> Eight cards in hand? Nine cards? Discard that flage. Hmm. <laughs> Sam getting yeah. ready to go here. Yeah, Bill. Discard the flage. Don't discard the ring. Oh, my goodness. Not that one. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> that one? Lots of decisions. The Wrath of the Skies? You're oh a madman, Bill. <laughs> Bill, we, Bill. The Supreme Supreme Verdict's great. That's fine. No problem. That's fine. That's the sorcery. Ooh. It's the guard is it? Whoa. Be scared. Here we go. Again, at any time, Bill can just <laughs> wrath for one and everything goes away. I know. Oh, that's another card. Like, K-Command Wrath doesn't always oh, refer to a destroyed yes. creature This spell. one is a shout-out to all the other Wraths. But, yeah, mm -hmm. this one is the Wrath of the Skies in Bill's hand. Go to 16 off the bird encounters to Sam's 12. Full grip here for Bill. Trying to piece together exactly how to kill his opponent. Yeah, because Wrath of the Skies is in the cycle of old-school cards reimagined with energy. Mm -hmm. So that's your Wrath of the Skies, your... Uh, the new Drake. Volatile Storm Drake. Volatile Storm Drake. Is like Gilded Drake. Yeah. Your Chthonian Nightmare. Ooh. Your um, Primal Prayers. And, and then the red, red one. one. <laughs> Galvanic Discharge? I don't know. Yeah, I guess. That's a red energy spell. I don't know. Is there a big, cool red card? Oh, it's the wheel. Wheel of oh, Potential. Wheel of Potential, yeah. yeah. Good one. Wrath of the Skies. Oh, I wish that, I wish that card was playable in my wheel commander deck. It just oh. really isn't. There are yeah. no other energy cards in my deck, so. Yeah. And this Wrath of the Skies, looks like Bill is only using two mana sources because we have a floating one energy. So we'll just spend that. All right. Right? Spend that. All right. We spent that. Right? 
the energy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's two white plus... Right. I'm just looking at the one die not removed from our token base energy storage. Yeah. Do you want to go yeah. fix their board state real quick for them? Yeah. Go for it. We'll just check. We'll hang. No worries. I feel like this game's about to wrap yeah. up. I, I don't know. They don't if need, it's they don't super need to be relevant. interrupted. I don't understand no flage here. They're in no rush. No rush, no flage. Um, I agree you just want to kind of get your flage in so yeah. we give the arena and start going to work. But uh, now's the time. Our opponent's about to die. We're about to do 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 damage right now. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you can play flage. Yeah. You can escape flage. Right. With the arena, which means it'll ETB, ETB, and attack on top of itself being a 6-6. Six, six, yep. On top of your 3-3 three, three salty. Okay, Bill. This card kills very quickly. I'm excited. But Just got to figure out the mana. Having him on a single turn clock is not the control way. Yes. Why win when I can take more game actions? Because sometimes game threes exist, people. <laughs> you no. need to end games. <laughs> and Flage has entered the battlefield, and Sam and has the left the battlefield. Yeah, and Sam has left the building. <laughs> oh, we appreciate these players putting the effort to move on over, play some fun games. We just want to bring you as much magic as we possibly can. Yeah, we featured a lot of different decks already tonight. I know someone already requested a return of the turns <laughs> deck. <laughs> return of the turn. Yeah, we'll see if he can piece together some more wins. Maybe we'll get him back on coverage. Well, I mean, we got a lot of players in the building, so we want to make sure we feature as many of them as possible. Uh, we will head into a break for now, though. Let's talk about something before we do. Let's talk about the Discord. I've okay. mentioned that a couple of times. We featured Here a bunch of decks on camera tonight. You can head into our Discord and, and uh, chat with all of our players uh, in any of the several channels that we have, format specific, um, to talk about all your magic needs. Uh, get access to uh, in-store promotions, details on events taking place in the future, all that good stuff. Check out the Discord there. It'll also link you to the series uh, socials as well, so you can get on to that goodness and participate in the greatest Midwest tournament series in the whoop, nation. Whoop, whoop. Yeah, the greatest Midwest in the nation. Yes, let's go. We love to see it. We're going to head into a quick break, folks. Stay tuned. Don't forget to drop a follow. Okay, bye. Don't forget to, don't forget to drop it. Just drop it. Drop it. Drop it. Drop, drop, drop the follow. Just drop it. Drop it. Drop it. Drop it. Welcome back, folks, to round three of Wednesday Night Modern. We got your season one champion, George Jabor, in the feature match area against his opponent, Michael, on four-color Murktide. We got that Narset jab-jab pile, baby. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> um, yes. we. <laughs> the part that I like the most about this is both of these players are playing uh, blue pile cards I like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so... Whoa. The turn one and two <laughs> for this flage. Yo, that's pretty pog, dude. I love that. That's good stuff right there. So we have George playing kind of the, the Narset slant on the Jeskai energy deck. Yeah, is it Jeskai Narset now? Yeah. Yeah. Flage and Discharge are just pretty good. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Big. Agree. Agree. Because uh, the Discharge allows you to bank up energy for your Wrath of the Sky, so it mm -hmm. kind of takes that good spot while helping you kind of figure out <laughs> the... Supreme Verdicts that have become Wraths. Mm -hmm. And then Michael here playing a uh, four-color Murktide. But you're going to see a lot of cards very similar to the UB Frog decks we're watching. Yeah. But Mike has additional support cards like Leyline Binding. For sure, for sure. We'll see exactly how this game shakes out as players get their first couple of lands out here. Mm. George, of course, surveilling that flage into the graveyard. Land go, land go. An important factor about the current iterations of this Jeskai deck that George is playing is they're not playing the typical large amount of lands that you typically see out of control decks. Mm -hmm. And that's important to notice because usually these controlling style matchups are all about making land drops, pass them back and forth, and the first person kind of hiccup is the one that'll fall behind. Mm. But now that we're playing less lands and a more typical land count, we reach that point of missing land drops faster. Mm. And then it starts becoming the, well, 
time to start the fireworks happens a few turns sooner. Oh, man. Okay, we'll see a hall of storm giants as yeah. Michael's third land, which will be tapped because of those two lands he's got out. Yeah, George may have flayed to try to end the game, but this hall of the storm giants Ooh. ends games just the same. Dude, I love a hall of storm giants swing. Yes. Uh, I'm a fan of Layer of the Hydra myself. These mm. these D and D lands are sneaky. Good. Oh no, get that Pioneer stuff out of here, man. That's that's <laughs> that's where that card lives. Excuse me. <laughs> I've never seen that card outside of this, that format. All I right. was talking about my Pioneer deck. Okay, right. yeah, there we go. I just it's, wasn't. It's talking, okay. Yeah. I'm just not talking Mono G. No, for sure. No, no. Oh, is it? In, it's not in creativity. No, I play it in the Spelunkian combo deck because you have a hundred mana just sitting around. Oh, interesting. Okay, I dig it. I dig it. We're continuing. It looks like George making their land drops, Michael making their land drops. And I point this out because that's the beginning of these matchups is just setting up your mana, mm -hmm. waiting for the first person to blink. This is kind of what I call the typical modern matchup because it's a lot of fetching and shuffling, right? I always <laughs> make the joke that the first couple of minutes of every modern match is shuffling, and this yep. is no exception. George has got his full domain online, mm -hmm. and Michael's got four of his five full domain online. He's got Jessica and... Uh, and Esper. Oh, he's got no green, yeah. No green. And Mike uh, might not even have green in the deck. We'll find out probably right now off this fetch. Yeah, it does say four-color Merktide up there. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like just throwing sort of a green one in there for Domain is pretty free if he's playing Leyline, like you said. I don't know if he submitted his deck list. So, um, okay, well, hopefully we'll find out right here, right now. Yeah. Right here, right now. Thundering Falls. Yeah, it looks like just four colors for Mike and his deck. Not a single spell cast this game nope. just yet. We do have a Flage, the only non-land yeah. we've seen so far. George it's in the graveyard. Three times. Mm -hmm. Mike's catching mm -hmm. up on the very first surveil now. Okay. We'll see spells here in a minute. There's the first yes. one of the game. All right. All right, friends. We're off. You can sneak through these cantrips because this <laughs> isn't what the game's about. Mm -hmm. Right? Mike can set up selection and start looking at these cards. Yeah. But... The Haymakers are the ones that can't resolve, so George does, does not mind this Preordain because it's not any action yet. For sure, for sure. If they start countering cantrips, something... <laughs> oh, yes. Something's gone wrong, I think. Mike, we got this big grip. Where's the land? Oh, we're going to have to Lorien for it. Let's go. Yeah, come on, George. Let him have it. Well, we got we to get somewhere. I was trying to figure out if there was even a way to to stop it if you wanted to. But oh, because it's cycle. It's not even a spell you could counter. Right. You could consign it. You can't because it's an activated. Oh, it's bullet. not triggered. It's activated. Yeah, 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 yeah. Excuse me. And finding the breeding pool, the green oh, source. Oh, never mind. I'm a big old liar. Look at that. But it looks like Michael's green source is an untapped one, so we can find it here while surveilling last turn, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. allowing us to gain that card advantage and then access to it untapped here. And. No, and shocking it in. Okay, life totals uh, yep. 17 to 15 now after George's fetch. Because if Mike had spent this mana in this turn, like if Mike used mana to preordain Lorien and play a tap land, uh -huh. it'd be his two mana versus George's six. Mm. And it'd be a big spot for George to try to push something like the one ring plus counter magic. And Mike can't let him get that much mana advantage. Right. So holding up these three will hopefully allow us to two spell. You see George gain easy surveil getting this galvanic discharge. How many surveillance does he play? <laughs> Probably those four. All four. Because uh, we have the two blue-white ones, a uh, red-white and a red-blue. I think that's all of them. We are going to oh, need to see this four Kai Merktide deck. I, I mean, we'll see. We'll see if during sideboards we can go request him submit real quick. I don't know if we'll have time, <laughs> though. We can, If you want to uh, ping him in the Discord later, you could give that a go. I mean, we'll see. I'm sure we'll see a lot of this deck. I don't think we're going to get this over <laughs> yeah, too right. quick. Yeah, try so. to play, play along at home. Try to piece it together if you can. <laughs> we see a Bowmaster and a Subtlety. Subtlety for this Bowman. Mana up for Michael. We'll put it on the bottom. And this allows George to start establishing his Protect the Queen. Mm. The Chosen Queen now is this Subtlety. It's a beautiful one. When, when are you gonna get the special guest textured foils, George? Oh, he doesn't play with no foils, foils though. This is this is this is team borderless versus team foil. Mm, got it, got it. I mean, like, I understand competitive players not liking foils. The textures don't curl as much though. Neither do the etched. You're exactly. There's ways to foil your deck while maintaining competitive integrity. 
And speaking of competitive, <laughs> big Merc, we're big Merkin. We're big Merkin, baby. Mike used the lightning bolt there to take care of the subtlety, and now we've got big Merc for big Mike. And now it's his turn to protect the queen. And George, with double blue up, let this resolve. And we're going to Leyline Binding because here in the end. Because he's set. got a removal spell instead. And beautiful timing on this, because if you see in Mike's hand, he's holding up a force of negation. But doing it on Mike's turn means we're not, we don't have access to the free interaction. Mm -hmm. Said making him cast a counter spell proper. Fully tapped out. And now George has all of the mana to work with. But he does have that force negation, like you said. Solitude cannot be forced. But it can get subtlety. Oh my gosh, which will get countered. Which oh is wow. So big because they George... both have the match ma the magic con counter spells yes. too. That's so good. Uh but they're they're trading George ate so many of Mike's cards there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um getting I think the three for three, but George gets to keep the solitude at the end of all of this. Right. They both have three three, yeah. Yeah, because because Mike spent blue card subtlety. And the Merc Tide. And George spent <laughs> Counterspell, White Card, Solitude. But the Solitude's still here. He didn't spend a White Card on the Solitude. He hard cast the Solitude. Oh, even better. And now it gets yeah. Prismatic Ending. The full five. You saw Mike just trying to figure out if they cast oh it. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Yeah. You can. You can. Pending for five. Wow. Sure I don't think I've ever seen that before. That's neat. I haven't seen many fives that you want, depending. But, uh, Solitude's a good target. That's a great card. Got to get it off the board, but now it's Flagian time. Yeah, it's finally, it's been there since turn one. That surveil will get escaped because George's graveyard is finally full enough. We'll start to maybe see some da some cards turn sideways. We might actually yeah. take a combat step here. Life total is at 20 to 17 after lots of life gain. But Flage attacks in chunks of nine. Indeed, do. Big life swings. And Mike with a single card in hand, going to be drawing up to two. George holding up enough mana to hard cast the force in hand. But we have force, Narset, counterspell. Oh, you know what he what Michael has soon? The hall. The hall. He's the got hall. the he's got hall mana. Ooh. Oh man. George got a lot of mana himself, though. Here comes the first flash swing. I think George has this game locked. We have counterspell, force, uh, and Narset. So we have all answers covered, and we only need one more turn. Here comes the new printing of Narset, mm. a little bird girl herself. In the Flexlot Discord, we're all just showing, we have a, we have a mail day channel. Yeah. All of the mail day channels are us buying the new Narsets and Teferis. <laughs> just all of us buying them. Yeah, you'll love to see it. Narset on the stack, into Force, into Counterspell, counterspell into, into Counterspell. Pew, 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 pew. And the last firework is going to be Narset resolving. Wow. And Flage still being. Here. Love these counter stacks. This is great. Narset find Narset. Dig through time for dig through time. Pass turn. Big rip, Mike. Ooh. Mana for blocker. Mana for blocker. Mana for blocker. Let's go. Yep. George is doing the math. Thinking. Okay. That's blocker. Yeah. Which will Michael Helbin. Oh, but we get to attack, deal three to Mike. Mm -hmm. uh, Mike blocks. We get to bring it back. Oh, we have the Gyre Reach. Oh, my gosh. He's got the Gyre Reach. George, George isn't going to attack, I think, because now he's got the lock. Yeah. This is the lock. Mm -hmm. But then Mike can untap, animate the hall, attempt to kill the Narset. Mm -hmm. So the lock isn't fully if he If in. he attempts to kill the Narset, though, then he just dies to the Flage. You're right. And he just dies to the Flage. Yeah, because I thought, I, I was thinking last turn, yeah, kill the Narset, but you, you just can't afford it. Yeah. Mm, find a Wrath of the Skies off the Narset. It might just be the card that might do something in this case. George will turn the Flage sideways in face of the uh, uh, non-animated yet Hall of Storm Giants, but soon will be. Beautiful island choice, Mike, by the way. <laughs> yeah, big fan of that. Of the Hall will get animated, block, and kill the Flage. Oh, it's a 7-7, seven, seven, right? And oh. then he will Wrath to kill the Hall. Because it's a zero. Wrath for zero. That's great. And then there's enough cards to bring back the Flage. Next turn. Next turn, next turn, next turn. Because Replace. this Narset is the last card we need. Mm-hmm. Wowzers. He's got mana to... to. Oh, no, he's going to use the guy reach, I was yep. going to say. That's Lock fine. established. Mm -hmm. Mike can't do anything now because the land's yep. gone. So knows that <laughs> even if it was uh, a turn or two from now, <laughs> that it... uh. <laughs> Won't matter. Mike is locked under the Gyrich Sanitarium alongside the Flage coming back. Those are two pieces that are difficult for Mike. 
it might take two, three, maybe five minutes for the game to truly end, but they might need that time for the rest of these games. All right, George will take down game one in our third round of the night. We'll take a look at his full submitted deck list here. Thank you, George. There's his full 60, and we'll look at the 15 in the sideboard. We have another Flage, Obsidian Charma. Consigned to memory, Celestial Purge, another Wrath of the Skies, Days Undoing, Mystical Dispute, Supreme Verdict, and Soul Guide Lantern. So it'll be very interesting because George did not see... Did we see Murktide that game? We did not. Did we see a Flage out of our opponent? No. So importantly, depending on how much George knows or has seen, mm. depends on if we go for these Soul Guide Lanterns. Because okay. they're answers to the mana for Murktide and for Flages. Mm -hmm. But those are maybes. But a card like a Mystical Dispute, absolutely. Yeah. This Days Undoing, it is meant for these blue base matchups, right? Because that is the old school George Shavorlock alongside this Narset. The card's uh, in the main, but here's the second one on the board to really just put that one-two punch back together. And it'll be interesting to see how George does the full sideboarding mm -hmm. because Obsidian Charma is a card that some Jeskai players like to bring in in the mirror to deal with like opposing Manamos or Arena of Glories. While also having a four four flyer and kind of put the game away, but Mike is playing. Obsidian Charma flies. Yeah, it's a four four flying dragon. Yeah, it flies. <laughs> yeah. So that card is typically sometimes used in the mirrors to help deal with the really important uh, lands out of the opposing deck. Mike isn't playing Manama or Arena of Glory, but is playing a very greedy mana base. So George might lean on these cards anyways thinking I might need it for the powerful lands, but I'll need it for the greedy mana anyways. I'm like so shook right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, I thought it was a lizard, but I guess a dragon is just a flying lizard. Flying lizard. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah, I don't think we have a deck list to show as an example for what Mike is running because it's just, you know, yeah, the sort of flavor of the week, big, lots of color, yeah. fun cards. Hop in the Discord. Yeah, give yeah. a shout. I really enjoyed this deck. Saw it on stream. Someone will help you find it. No rings for George. That's correct. He's uh, probably playing the Narsets in the ring spot to feel something. <laughs> yeah, George has been taking a, a, a little break from Modern. Has been playing too often in Season 2. Not a big fan of, Not a you know. big fan of the current format meta. But this is his bread and butter. This is mm -hmm. his jam. Uh, working alongside good friend Garrick. You know, won, a, won an energy with some blue-white control. Indeed. Big Azorius control buddies. Uh, Garrick been crushing it in online events playing this style deck. George putting a little bit of his spice on it, coming out to play some locals, not the leagues over and everything's restarting. Mm -hmm. And this is the beauty we have to work with. All right, we'll head back into the action. Players still shuffling up here. Michael will be on the play for game two as he lost game one. George has a single solitude, and it's the solitude we drew that game. Wow. <laughs> Seems good. You don't have to know that you got beat by the one lander, but you, <laughs> you did have a very important moment of the one lander. If if uh if he uh, watches the stream back, he'll find out. Mm, shout out, future Mike. Uh, chat. Do you watch back matches that you've lost or win yes. more often? All of the above. Yes. I watch them all back. I don't watch, I watch any of my matches. I watch them back <laughs> um like weekly ish. You yeah, oh, you yeah. go back and rewatch it multiple times. Yep. Mm, that's dedication. Yeah. I do not watch any of my streams or commentary. I, I do see. not like. I do not like seeing <laughs> myself on coverage. I do not like listening to my voice. Oh, I mean that's um, a big draw for a lot of folks. The you know the NRG series having the NRG home store mm -hmm. having this this coverage. These folks right here. This wonderful uh, camera match is what draws these big crowds of people too. Is you want to see your name up in lights crushing it winning games of magic oh absolutely i think i'm definitely in the minority oh, yeah. there <laughs> but also i think you win uh sorry you learn a lot more from games you don't win mm -hmm. um absolutely i think it would be good for me to oh, yeah. <laughs> to review and look at my matches i am just really stubborn <laughs> mm -hmm. and i'm maybe a little too far yeah uh, on I the can, other end of the spectrum i can tell you every loss i've had in the past month and how I could have won those games oh, because I just man. keep thinking about it. Oh, that, that, yeah, no, that's something too. Mike, this dedication, <laughs> we're just firing off a bolt turn two. Just, Let's go. Just send it. Just put that card in the yard. It's got one job and it's going upstairs. Indeed. I, li I like the altar Japanese one too, yeah, the, the Strict Saving one. That's the, um, that's the art card Adam signed for me after, after, uh, he won the RC. Good choice. Yeah. Uh, 
big, big fan of the Japanese ephemerates. If anyone's Ooh, got them, that's a I good one. Love them. I think the grape shot might be my favorite. Ooh, grape shot, good too. I like that one with the like wild hair and everything mm-hmm, going. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Our, our players are setting up their mana. That's why yep. we're talking about beautiful cards. We're we're hanging out. We remember this stage before. Mike mm-hmm. just uh, weaved in a bolt for funsies this time. Exactly. Fetching mana in uh, a little bit of a different order this time as well. George still rocking all those surveillance. Has gotten two lands out of the way on the top of his deck. And this is a third uh, triumph out of Mike. We've seen the Rogren triumph. We've seen Xander's. And we've seen the uh, Esper one. Mm-hmm. The big guys Rafine's tower <laughs> um, yeah we got there at the same time you know the big guy's tower the big guys that big thinking, birdie guy i was thinking it was tibbet off the tibbet the, sure the that's another bird right yeah, it's the commander sphinx mm. For all kind of a bird shout out, yeah what's what's a sphinx but a bird in there somewhere kind bird, of bird cat wait lion oh wait i'm trying <laughs> a sphinx lore <laughs> coming in hot right now I think my brain just broke trying to think of <laughs> the different hybrids that a Sphinx is. Anyway, we'll go back to the magic here. Zagoth Trium has entered the chat. Full domain online for both our players here. Uh, yes. So Mike's full domain comes from weaving it all together from three different lands together. George does have access from Sacred Foundry or Elegant Parlor and Zagoth Trium. Mm-hmm. So George's mana base incentivizing to get access to a one-mana binding ASAP, whereas Mike has so many pieces of interaction that we can take a couple of turns to set it up because we'll interact along the way. Exactly. Such as on turn two with a lightning bolt to the face. (laughs) Send it. I love sending it. It's a plane. I like turning stuff sideways. I don't like passive gameplay like this, although I understand that it's a natural part of the game. It's only for these control players when they meet each other, (laughs) and this is... uh, this is a Dan Dan of Constructed, right? <laughs> this it's is like, the Dan Dan. I think, yeah, that's a fair comparison. I don't like Dan Dan for what uh, it's worth, so because this that's is what game, they have in common. Yeah, this is a, a part of the game played mentally, right? Mm-hmm. It's, this is the true, like, wizard's battle of, like, I'm preparing my spells for when you <laughs> play yours. But also, George is up seven mana to four right now. Oh, my gosh, yeah. Uh, Mike's been missing land drops, and... George can now kind of willy-nilly fire cards off against Mike's because there's a much higher likelihood that George's will resolve and be able to fight back because Mike just doesn't have enough mana to play this game. That does uh, hypothetically mean that Mike has more pieces All of interaction spells. in his hand as opposed to George, who's been drawing more lands. Three mana. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> George's favorite and least favorite card all at the same time. Exactly. One of the best cards in control and one of the best cards against control. It will get responded to with a subtlety. I assume Mike is not thinking about whether to counter the subtlety, but whether to put the Teferi back on top or bottom. No, he will counter it. And George will spawn with the exact same copy of Counterspell. And And now Mike will decide whether to put it on the top or the bottom. Life totals 13 to 14 in Michael's favor. If I was... George, I would have pointed the counter spell at the Teferi. Yeah. Mm, fair. Because fair. now now the card exists for Mike uh, on top if you would like. If he wants to, yeah. I think it w- I mean, it's such a good card against control, right? I feel like it would be wise to put it on top, although I really am not the expert here. Uh, uh, bot. Oh my gosh. Uh, oh wow. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Mike, I'm feeling your decision making here. This is a rough one. There it is. Tippy top for Teff. It's hard because Mike's missing land and falling behind, but right. if this card sneaks its way in, it's very good. He's got the exact right amount of mana though. Right? You want at least two mana up as mm-hmm. a control player, so with five lands to ferry is is fine to put back on top, I think. And it was all fun and games before. But I really wish that we had that uh, lightning bolt back for the subtlety. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm all about blasting, <laughs> but yeah. we knew that Interesting. we would need the bolt eventually. For sure. Yeah, it's in there for a reason, right? Yeah. It's it doesn't really kills the walkers, kills solitude, mm-hmm, kills subtlety. Mm-hmm. Um, just giving you so many of kind of George's pieces to push the game forward outside of Flage. But I mean, there's fun and just blasting it all through <laughs> the game. I mean, magic is fun, and I, that's that's fun first. That, that's what I like about Mike is that he plays cards that he enjoys, right? Oh yeah. 
And it turns out just all of them are good. <laughs> yeah. Look at that. Another good card. Murktide. Love it. And we get to eat the bolt now, too. Easy peasy. Oh, no. Now, this is rough <laughs> because those that cards are just gone. That really Delvin. hurts, yeah. Subtlety in response to the delved Murktide. Ooh, counterspell. He gets it anyway. Let's go. Creature on the board for Michael. It flies, too, just like that mm -hmm. subtlety. Now the question is, does George have Leyline Binding or Teferi or that one of Solitude to try to uh, push the Murktide back? And it, it's the Leyline Binding. It is that breaking news. You no longer have a creature. <laughs> this just in, Murktide uh, tied to the tracks. Oh, no. <laughs> That's what they're doing in Leyline Binding. Yeah, no, for sure. They're binding them to the ley lines that is the it, track. It's a, it's a fun mental image to think of a dragon being Just tied. tied down. Of a dragon in, in like a Western setting. <laughs> Just trying to blend in. Mm -hmm. Big five for George. Big mm. five. The Obsidian Charmaw. Oh, there's the Charmaw, the showcase version as well. If we we'll pull so that up real quick for folks, that's I not a card you see too, too often. I think if I'm George, I might hit the... So the breeding pool is an option because you know it's the only green source. Or you can hit one of these triomes because it's a freaking triome. Yeah, because it's got the most utility. And looks like we're going to Leyline Binding for one mana while we can in response to the targeting from the Charmaw. Mm -hmm. And we, like I said, I was wondering if these cards were going to come in. It's a big part of kind of fighting this these control matchups. Mm-hmm. Another Leyline Binding? So what George is doing here is he's, he's binding the binding in response so that his card never gets exiled. Right. But if I were him, yeah, he let it get binding, then bound it so that it gets the ETB again, and he <gasps> put both Triumphs. Oh, that's gross. Yeah. Oh, gosh. And okay, and they seven swings. mana. Oh, man. Seven, seven power, sorry. Big flies down to one for Mike. Be a shame if we had a Flage in the graveyard. <laughs> hey, oh, we're just going to continue to stone. How about rain. another Charma? No. No mana for you. Yeah. There's the Nux. Ooh, pretty dominating win there for our Season 1 champion, George. Welcome back to Modern, sir. I hope you enjoy your time here. Advanced to 3 0 on the night. Nicely Noth done. Nothing like a George and a Narset. <laughs> uh, we allowed one exception, bringing in his own playmat, because boy, oh, boy, is it mm -hmm. the League Champ Season 1 playmat. Yeah, we got to get Isaac back in here so he can collect his play mat as well. Folks, if you'd like to play in a modern league, check keep an eye on our socials. We haven't announced season three yet. We're letting people enjoy their uh, non-league play for a little bit before we get back yeah. into that action. And some folks might be leaving for school soon. We'll give exactly. them a hot second for yeah. a shake out. Exactly. I think our backup match just wrapped up as well. Or are they going to another game? Going All right, another well, game. Backup match. Wee let's wee. go. We got some more magic for you, folks. Who is it? It's Yovan versus Mike. Mike. Ooh, blue or blue white taxes. Yeah, I saw one of Mike's games earlier had a literal tax collector in play from Assassin's Creed. I believe so. Mm -hmm. Um, I I could I could be uh, misspeaking. There were two taxes players sitting next to each other out there playing. So I don't want to misquote Mike's deck, but. The most blue eye taxes Two thing you taxes could do. Taxes players, and one of them wasn't rich. Who else is playing taxes out there? Uh, That's crazy. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, uh, uh, this deck is resurging for the. From Apparently, the, yeah. Uh, I think there's even a third. He's just playing something different today mm -hmm. that I played against him on taxes a few weeks ago. Right on. And uh, I mean, I see Mike here boarding out Thalia's. You know. <laughs> Wait. Against the control player? I, or maybe we're bringing him in. Maybe that's the board in pile. Yeah, it's. I, I would hope so. Maybe. Thalia seems great. Yeah, I, I can't tell which which way they're going, but Thalia's in one of these two piles. All right, while we wait for players to sideboard here, let me ask you folks, if you haven't yet already, to hit that follow button. We're Please. live every Wednesday at 6.30 with, I like to say, pretty fantastic modern coverage. I hope mm -hmm. y'all are enjoying it. And if you're feeling extra generous, use your Prime subscription or a few of your own dollars to subscribe to the channel. Get access to emotes and ad-free viewing, and it lets us know how good a job we're doing. We do this for you guys, so if you're enjoying it, please let us know. Say hi in chat, too. It really helps us do our job when there's more chat um, hanging out with us. I don't look at the viewer count because that stresses me out, but <laughs> it's good to know that you're there when you say hi in chat. We're taking a quick peek here at Mike's blue-white tax list for those who want to see. Oh, this is he this submitted? Is Let's yeah. go. I just sent it in. We're floating around cards like Meddling Mage, some Glass Pool Mimics, Spell Queller, uh, Teferi Time Raveler, and Cryptic Coat. 
as kind of those blue cards in the main to go along the Taxus shell. Cards like Leon and Arbiter, Stoneforge, Felia, Thalia, White Orchid Phantasm, Flicker Wisp, Recruiter of the Guard. Oh, let's go. Uh, and all of this being backed up by these powerful sideboard cards. It'll be interesting to see pieces probably like Subtlety and maybe even a Spell Pierce if you can. Mm -hmm. Just try to fight back against the Jeskai control deck. But what's always interesting is uh, controlling shells in the modern format mm -hmm. have to be very specific with what cards they're playing to kind of target the meta that they expect. And when you play something off meta like Blue White Taxes, it's always interesting to see if there are cards that suddenly become wrong choices when pit up against a deck you didn't expect. Interesting. Good points there. Hi in chat. Lawrence, New York Giants. Oh, <laughs> no. We don't know if that's the case, but... It has chat. to be. I'm a Jets fan. I know what that acronym <laughs> means right there. Get out of here, man. Uh, and our, uh, our players in chat would love to know who won game number one. If we um, we'll, we'll see who's right. on the play Whoever's here. Whoever's on the draw, yeah, they won game one. Uh, you would think, yes. Uh, <laughs> no eight rack today. <laughs> no, no, Alex no. Alex isn't here. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but our players getting ready. See an eighth or vial. A good start to beat down against the control deck. Indeed. I did meet with our uh, round one feature match, Jack, mm -hmm. to have a little sit down chat about boarding eighth or vial out against a uh, blue base deck. Yeah. Uh, I told him that. It happened, and Clark lost his mind. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I can't believe you did that. So a learning opportunity has been gained. Looks like Mike here on the play playing Witch Enchanter on the backside. Oh, I'm not going to do it. I can't. I believe it's Witch Blessed Meadow. Yeah. No, I was going to. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I'm not going to lean into the pun that they literally made the card for. What are you talking about? I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> As the Prismatic ending here takes down that turn one eighth of out, showcasing just how important a card like that is for the taxes deck against Jeskai that Jovan took the immediate chance to remove that from the board. I think that's great. Yeah, Aether Vial means that you can't counter it. And so <sighs> that's that's a great answer right there. Mike in a rough spot. We have a Felia in hand, a card that's very powerful because of its flash. Mm. But if you pass to your controlling opponent, they're going to untap and have their counter magic available. That uh, Mike may have interest in sorcery speed casting your flash threat. All right, he will go ahead, play another tapped land. This is the Glass Pool Shore on the backside of Glass Pool Mimic. I think that's right. Yeah, <sighs> sounds good to me. MDFTs Nicely done. are awful. Just uh, adding so many more names. Indeed, yeah. Twice, twice yeah. the information to have to know. Yeah. Land go from Yovan will shock in the Steam Vents, bringing us to 16 to 17 in Mike's favor. Mike drew the only card in the deck you never want to draw in the Culture Complete. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh, I've been there, man. I've definitely been there. We'll play his third lamb for turn. Back into the tank. Mm -hmm. Mike kind of incentivized to go for a Teferi because... <gasps> ooh. We'll because let to kind the of shut tune the narrative resolve. And now I'm going to flash on my Felia before my control opponent could untap. Nope, nope. Still still going to commit. Mike, I hope you have Spell Queller. I hope, you, I, hope we, I hope we got the Spell Queller. Ooh, I haven't seen that card in a minute. That'd be fun. Spell Queller... Uh, May or may not have been the card uh, that I used to win my game day at one point. Oh, yeah? The, oh, there she is. A card that I played alongside uh, Three Fairy and Oko and Pioneer before both <laughs> of those cards got banned. Oh, my gosh. Oh, <laughs> gosh. Wow. But here's the Felia, and she's resolving, which is hard to know if you're Mike. Mm -hmm. Did Jovan just want to let her resolve? Is it because we have removal, or does Jovan not have counter magic? He's definitely got a Galvanic Discharge in hand, which is removal. He's got Teferi, Solitude as well. Modern Doggos. Yeah, can we get a dog-themed deck in Modern? That'd be sick. We got one in this Felia. Mm -hmm. Who else could play? I think play? you need at least two to make it a themed deck. Oh, Mike is playing blue white taxes, but not playing the new Bloomboro card uh, Mockingbird, which is really, Ooh. really good to copy a lot of these um, these tax based threats, mm -hmm. especially because uh, they'll end up with flying. Yeah. Uh, in three, a bird, bird dog, bird dog, Galvanic Discharge will end up targeting this Felia <laughs> while Mike is tapped out. You're gonna bolt this dog? Can't believe it. This is like. Game designer Michael Major's dog <laughs> embodied on a magic card. How arc, could you? And you're going to send a bolt at it. Cancel this man. 
That's why the dog's name is Felia. Mm-hmm. Uh, Michael Major's dog's name is Ophelia. Yeah. So they took the O off, and mm-hmm. we're left with Felia. Yes, it is. Fun facts, everybody. Magic players put their dogs on cards mm-hmm. if you get to design them. Yeah. Who maybe, wouldn't? I, I mean, I would. You got to put your dog on if you can. Absolutely. And it's a great one. It's a well-designed dog. It's seen playing modern. What a well-designed dog. <laughs> Loving this dog. Mike passing the turn back again. Missing land drops. A little bit yeah. of a rough situation. Jovan is. This is exactly where he wants Mike to be, right? Mm-hmm. He uh, gains uh, extra draws when your opponent. Um, I don't know what I'm trying to say here, mm-hmm. but he likes when your opponent does nothing. Yes. Spell queller. Invert vert polarity. Invert polarity. Okay. This. Oh, All right. This card. Let's see if Jovan gets a spell queller instead. That shrug, I think, means... Nope. Uh, the, I guess shrug <laughs> the means shrug I take means it. means yes. Okay. Um, All right. Question. Are you a sure. fan of uh, John Avon? Sure. Are you a fan of that Plains that Yovan has in play? Sure. I bought a play mat of that Plains yesterday. It's a really pretty beautiful, Plains. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I'd like, say John Avon is one of the best landscape artists in the game. So good. So good. Mm-hmm. As Mike continues, I think, to miss land again here. Yeah, generally a magic player's first action of every turn is to play a land if they have it. We'll see him cast a spell instead in Relic of Progenitus. Oh, yeah, I thought that was an Aether Valve for some reason. Such a similar shape to him. I was like, oh, yeah, okay, that sounds good here. Mm-hmm. But He's got a second one in hand, too, and that that's really not yeah. too great. I mean, it does replace itself. Um, but he'll just play the one pass, leave mana up to pop it if he wants. Yeah, I think we're going to wait until a flage hits the bin and that's when the relic we popped. I think so. Jovan milling over the monumental henge. This is not a Jeskai mirror, so no need for that big uh, card advantage piece in your land base. Spell Queller will start turning sideways, bringing Mike to 15, still ahead of Jovan's 12. Mike. Find a fourth land. And Volatile Fjord. Oh, wow. Good call. I was not going to get that. (laughs) Somebody else has been playing taxes for a little bit to (laughs) re-remind me that the Fjord exists. He'll use the colored mana. Oh, is Fjord a fetch? No, Fjord is a uh, pay one mana to destroy a land. Okay, because it's 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 curious to me that he's using the colored mana to cast the the relic in this instance. Possibly leaving up the use of this uh, Fjord in case Jovan plays uh, an Arena of Glory or a Manamo. Anything. All right, Surveil will leave on top for Jovan up to six lands now. We'll just continue to attack with Mike's own creature, bringing him to 13 now. Jovan weaving in this Undercity Sewer, most likely an additional Black Source for their Prismatic ending, just allowing them the option to hit important four mana cards, like the One Ring. Mm-hmm. Card they can be a headache for opposing Jeskai decks. Headache for, I would say, most players. Most decks. <laughs> most, most, most people. But, you know, typically a Jeskite-based deck, it's pretty easy to weave in a splash color just to make sure your pendings can get all the way up to four. Spell Queller beatdowns, not even Jovan's own card, just using it against Mike. Finally see a card cast on oh. Jovan's own turn. Sorcery Speed to Fairy Time Raveler will come down on the field. No tax effects for Mike, so Jovan just plays... MSRP for, for, for <laughs> just, the Teferi. Just paying MSRP <laughs> for this Teferi. Yeah. Loving it, loving it. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. It's something that doesn't exist in Magic anymore. Uh, sound off. Any... <laughs> Mike, you're <laughs> tapping down, beginning the turn here. Looks like a two drop, some sort of game action. Stone. Forge. Let's go. Classic Texas card, Stoneforge Mystic. Yovan got to have some sort of response to this. It will be subtlety. a subtlety hard casted to tap him out. This is your only piece of action, Mike. This got to go back on top, right? And this is your one way to get the cauldron out of your hand. Mm. Ooh, put it back on top. Okay. Crack your relic, draw a card, cast the Stoneforge. Yeah, especially with Yovan tapped out. I really like that. Thank you. We'll see exactly which line Mike opts to take here. He's got to have at least something else to do. He has to play another spell in this turn. Because Yovan is tapped out, this is his opportunity to get something on the board. Get some action. Get a little bit of momentum going. Yovan now in the lead, 12 to 11, after these uh, couple of swings with the Spell Queller. Mike, deep thinking here. And passing the turn back. 
Not going to play anything. I, I'm trying to see the spells in his hand. He's got a few cards left. Assumedly, he's got something he can cast, but will opt not to. Swings with both the Spell Queller and the Subtlety oh, will bring yeah. Mike down to six. Yovan bouncing his own Subtlety to wow. regain access to that piece of interaction and drawing a card. That's, that's heads up play. That's that's good stuff right there. Loving it. That's the, that's the control player way. Am I continuing to not pop these relics? I feel like you have to gain some card advantage at this point, especially when you have two of them. You can turn one of those into a, a free card. And now we're going to go for the Stone Forge, and you're not going to believe what card you <laughs> picked up. You won't believe. You just won't believe. What spell this control player cast. And bottom? <laughs> Find and find find something else. I want to see some Buzzfeed uh, magic magic articles, Buzzfeed style magic you, articles. You won't <laughs> you won't believe what card my opponent just escaped. This burn player cast a red spell, and you won't believe where he sent it. You won't believe. <laughs> Hashtag upstairs. Upstairs. And Jovan here. With exactly five power in play. Three, oh, there's no way he's got the sixth. Bring him down to one. Yovan, you got a flage that you've been hanging on to? A oh. one ring's good enough. I think that's plenty. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and Mike agrees. <laughs> uh, congratulations. We can see both of our Jeskai players going to... Three and O, oh, a strap in for the last round, possibly. Oh, I think we might see Amir. I, we do have enough players that I believe we have more than two three O's. We'll find out, won't we? Oh, Brennan, that's so good. Top ten answers to Nadu. Number seven will make you cry. Number but this break won't. But before <laughs> we go to break, should I let you know that any of the cards that you've seen tonight are purchasable on NerdRageGaming.com? You can schedule for in-store pickup, event pickup in Madison, or ship countrywide. We also have a rewards program. The more you spend, the more you save. Even as soon as your first purchase, you get 1% back in store credit that you can spend on future purchases. Uh -oh. We'd love if you spent money on our website and got yourself some cards to play Magic because it's the greatest game. You'll Have love I. to see it. Thank you very much for the, the support and chat. System 021. Great job, guys. I, I love to see it. Thanks for hanging out in chat. We'll be right back with round four. See you all soon. Bye. <laughs> Welcome back, folks. We're in our final round of the night. We have undefeated. Technically, a tie is not a defeat. Not been defeated. Mm -mm, we got Valerie. If we could fix her name real quick, I think there's an E at the end. Valerie versus George Merktide. I think Dimmer Merktide. Dimmer. Versus Jeskai Narset. We'll get stuff underway here for our players. Hope you guys enjoy these two types of decks. We've seen them a few times tonight already. But we got we got Valerie in the feature match for the first time tonight. We'll see how she stacks up against George. Yeah, tons of folks we've seen on the camera already floated to the top. Uh, Valerie just played Clark in the like seventy five card mirror. Oh gosh. Uh, <laughs> our three zero undefeated players were both playing Jeskai Control and decided mm -hmm. they'd rather go home than play it out. <laughs> and we have this wonderful match here with again your season one champ against a Valerie recently top eight in energy mm -hmm. not too long ago. She top eight in energy. I think she top eight in season one as well, or All she right. got really close. I forget. She's been definitely a strong competitor in um in our modern league. I think maybe just attendance has um been a struggle for her. I think she's mm -hmm. been traveling a bunch recently. So Which is great. Yeah, keep an eye out for her. She's real good at this game. And Valerie always keeps track of kind of like the new toy, right? The second yeah. thing starts like creeping up again i'm expecting valerie to be on it this uh blue black frog tide is no different mm -hmm. no she uh she top it with amulet titan as well so she's definitely good at playing uh, different types of decks as right. well turns out valerie might just be good <laughs> we breed some pretty strong competition at this store it's pretty great yeah yes uh, some more of the same uh as we saw last round a bit of land go in the first couple of turns here maybe some cantrips if if they want, but generally just setting up mana at this point. And I think Valerie here is looking to fetch before possibly casting a frog or a preordain, just making sure to have the mana set up either before getting access to that selection mm -hmm. or just trying to push a threat, that is. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if there will be too many fatal push targets on George's side of the field. 
Yeah. She'll tap out. Frog. For a frog. Just trying to push an early frog if we can. Yeah, makes sense. She's got that very cool borderless art as well. George will oh, fetch yeah. in response, but then go into the tank here for a second. Maybe trying to figure out exactly which land to grab. Yeah, I love this frog. Very, it's really neat looking, right? Very evocative. Is and this the Nils Ham art? I believe that's the artist. Sure. <laughs> I'm sorry. We've been yeah. talking about making sandwiches, and now you're talking about ham. But, uh, <laughs> Counterspell meets that psychic frog into the bin at Ghost mm-hmm. Keys and then back to George. You know, this will be a little different than we saw the control on control matchup. Mm-hmm. This UB frog deck kind of wants to get, as I keep calling them, a queen into play, something to protect and push through the game. Oh, speaking but of a queen, Narsat's here. This is the new, I think, crane. Oh, um, I don't know what, I don't know my birds. I do not know my birds. What do you Valerie? Mean it's not a crane. Is it an egret? What is an egret? Oh man. Okay, Valerie will then force. We'll find out. We'll find out. We'll find out. <laughs> we'll force the Narsa. George will uh, put it into exile. And exile, I guess, is uh, down there. I know it's a very interesting exile place. I thought for a second she had subtletyed it because he's like kind of putting it at the bottom yeah. of his deck. I think he's just utilizing space due to where the phone's at. Right. Right. But they say okay. Mm-hmm. And we're frog, thinking. Frog is great, Chatter. I agree. There's, there's the some room people, agrees out there. The room agrees, yes. It is a dominant part of our metagame right now. I've seen people, you know, people are talking about the legacy metagame a lot, how, how grief is the biggest problem there. I think attitudes have turned towards Frog being a big, oh not problem, goodness. but very prevalent part of the meta there. Valerie will tap two man. I think we might see another Frog. I was saying our metagame out in the field right now is Jeskai. Uh-huh. Frog Tide yeah. and nonsense. So and nonsense. You're playing one of those three things out there right now. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Is living in nonsense? Nonsense. Living nonsense. in OG nonsense. <laughs> Goblins? Nonsense. Taxes? Nonsense. That's nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can't even Turns? Say this. Nonsense. A little, a little silly. <laughs> <laughs> Valerie going to fetch here on end step. No way. Is it going to be an undercity sewers? Yeah, probably. I think I don't think she's playing any other dual lands. Oh my goodness, it is Eldrazi. Nonsense. Come on. Kidding me? That's got to that's got to be like B tier. They're the definition of nonsense. Oh my goodness. They're so at, they're so goofy. Have you yeah, that's not <laughs> you look at them, they're nonsense. They're all over the place. They got so many like squiggly things and whatever. Yes. The vibe of an Eldrazi is nonsense. <laughs> No questions asked. Nonsense. Mm-hmm. Non. George has surveilled a flage into the graveyard. Flage in the G Y. Uh oh. No, no, there. I got my flage signed this weekend at Gen oh Con. My goodness. The borderless Alex does Diaz art card. Okay, shoot. He had some really sick prints too. I really wanted to buy one, awesome. but I've promised myself since. Uh, I I buy. I don't. I gotta stop buying prints at conventions. Mm. It's like my one rule because I'm just not gonna do anything with it. It's gonna sit in a pile somewhere. But Val- he had some <laughs> really nice ones. Valerie attempts this frog, and I have to say, you kind of buried the lead with I got my flage signed. You know, my artist card. Yeah, <laughs> I don't play modern. I <laughs> no, just commentate. No, it's all good. <laughs> As a uh, supreme verdict looks to be looking to one for one with this psychic frog. Interesting. Okay. Sure. Well, because you can pitch as many cards in it as you want, but it's dead. Mm-hmm. And it's uncounterable. That's the second frog that Valerie's going to lose. There's definitely some down. other things. I know the f- the the um, name of the deck does put Frog Tide in front of Merc Tide, but there <laughs> is another creature in this deck that yep. she could gain access to at some point. There's a, a hefty graveyard that she can use to cast that card as well with George tapped out. Oh, yeah, very important. Force of Negation does not hit a creature like Merc Tide. And she's got Counterspell back up as well once it goes back to George's turn. She might yeah. not have a Merc Tide in hand, though. I think that would probably be slammed if she did. Mm-hmm. So maybe mm-hmm. she is. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. Mm-hmm. I think she's delving. Oh, here mm-hmm. it comes. You mean blue, blue? Let me look at my <laughs> graveyard. Oh, who is it just off screen there? Oh, it's a lovely regent. A dragon oh, regent. Just a 4-4. Four, four. Mm-hmm. Now, Valerie specifically was able to do this with just enough to keep up this counter spell that we see uh, just here on screen. That means even if George tries to go for a bindings, can either own counter magic as well to fight back against Valerie's counter magic. 
I really like the lighting. It puts uh, Valerie in like a very like heroic, like bright light, and George in this very like. <laughs> what do you brooding... say? What are you trying to say here? I don't know, but what I'm just I'm saying? just making observations mm. that George is very uh, backlit, are you and tr- <laughs> Valerie is very frontlit right now. Are you now. trying to say that our season one champion is the enemy? I would never. I can't believe this. I would as this never Blage say that. is escaped. Blage is escaped. Valerie, think we'll cast that counter spell. Yeah, George kind of felt it coming there, put it straight back into mm-hmm. the bin. All of our Chicago locals playing that Magic on Chicago <laughs> counter spell. Yeah, they all got him. Yeah. Well, I got him. I'm on the hunt for those ponders. You got a ponder? I saw them at Gen Con. I, I really thought about Ooh. buying them. I don't play anything except standard right now so i couldn't justify it i have no allegiance to chicago but when i see that ponder i do it's I like know, the olympics right? exactly i was about to say the same exact thing i was like i am so not america filled un- until unless it's comes. unless it's that yep. four-year mark you know yep. oh man as here comes narset do we figure out what bird this is we have not figured out what bird this is bryce yet. where are you dude sorry Come I, on, man. I thought i saw production googling narset borderless <laughs> i thought we were on the hunt for the bird but that's A-OK, as Narset ticking down to three, doing what Narset does the best. Mm-hmm. With one swing of the Murktide, George is sitting at 12, so that puts him on a oh. three-turn clock. Or we have a Narset Slayer in the form of this Murktide. That as well, four-turn clock, if we want to take a turn off. And we were saying before, Valerie's already gone through two mm. frogs. Find the Teferi. Maybe she'll start going through, George will start going through some birds here. And the Murktide's on tippity dappying. And that's a Draw for turn will be that preordain. We'll see if Valerie casts any spells here before going to combat. I think the smart play is to take out this Narset before George gains any more card advantage from it. And that will be the play. What is it? What's the verdict? Dude, it's a red waddled lapling. Oh. <laughs> Obviously. Is it a Reddit thread? What is <laughs> <laughs> Everyone knew that she was a lapwing. <laughs> Obviously. We've all known this about Narset. I wonder if they, like, uh, I watched the weekly MTG stream about, like. It is very purposeful. Yeah. They, like, did a lot of research into the actual, like, creatures that they brought into Bloombro and, Mm -hmm. like, you know, did research and, like, the kind of environment and, like, whatever kind of birds, you know. Yes. The the birds, um, I at least know for one of them specifically, comes from, like, a native, uh, you know, you, uh, earthly based realm mm. to where if the character themselves natively would have been from like that portion of our world the bird was typically from that portion oh you mean like how like kaladesh has like a lot of like uh, i think indian themes right that if one or of like... them was to be a bird it most likely be like a native bird to that area i see that's I, cool i know i believe narset and teferi's birds are that way those are birds native to where those characters would come from if they were a member of of our earthly plane very cool i dig it the third frog cast for valerie will resolve back on george's turn he will cast that three fairy not putting a loyalty dice on it yet going to decide which mode to activate yeah, because it's weird. If we bounce this, Murktide actually comes back bigger and stronger. <laughs> yeah, she's got more more uh, in- sorceries in there now, I think. She's plusing? I forget the starting loyalty of Teferi. Starts at, starts at four. But that's what it, okay. So either down three or up one. So we'll end at either five or one. Right. It's so funny. I never see Teferi on four because people just put it in on the number that yeah. it, it goes to. Yeah, George is so deep in the tank that he's like... Kind of partially resolving, like, this is her start. We'll figure mm-hmm. out where she's going. Yeah, yeah. And still thinking, it's rough, right? Because mm. I see a, I see a, um, bounce the frog. a wrath in George's hand. Mm, wrath of the skies? Yeah. Really hard to get this seven CMC Merc Tide. I know. That's what I was thinking, too. Remember when we won for one to uh, Supreme Verdict with mm-hmm. the frog? Mm hmm. But he is a deck full of leyline bindings. Hmm. I, d- I, d- I doubt he's got one. Well, I don't know. I, c- I couldn't see exactly what's in his hand. Well, his domain is currently only three. So maybe that's why we had to go through so much, hold up these three mm. mana sources. Mm. That's a good point. Do you think she'll take the turn to take out the Teferi? Yep. <laughs> I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I thought about it. Yes. <laughs> okay. Took me a there's, moment. there's your answer. I I thought I think yes. And then throw the frog back down. Seems good to me. Pass it back. Frog Maybe down. cantrip for one. Nope. Yeah, we'll go back to George's turn here. Just a lot of thinking, making sure you don't misstep. These these blue mirrors, pretty tricky. Mm. 
And Valerie kind of putting George to the test. It's not going to be hard to play against a control opponent mm. to think, oh, they have counterspell. I'll just like, maybe I won't play this. Mm. Valerie just kind of pushed, put George to the test. George did not have them. And we have a frog and a Merc Titan in play against an opponent that we expected to counter everything. And he will play this Wrath, assumedly, to take out just the frog. He's yeah, on his three turn clock. Oh, but she will begin to tap some mana here. Just a single one oh. for what cost one mana. <laughs> I'm wondering if Ali's going to try to spell scenario, but realize we can't because we paid two into X. We're calling a judge. Makes me think that might be even closer to the possible scenario. We have a judge out there currently hanging out playing Legacy. There they are. <laughs> Today's modern? No, no, no. Today is, is the Legacy side event. <laughs> there are six people out there, just ca eight, just casually playing Legacy because yeah. they wanted to hang while half the Legacy crew is here playing modern I as know. well. Yeah, and then sometimes the, the modern players O2 drop go play Legacy. Yep. We li we like literally have yeah. a Legacy side event on modern nights. Sometimes they one O drop go play Legacy. One O drop go play Legacy. I'm not I'm not saying names, uh, George, but okay. <laughs> Yeah, George a big fan of Legacy and playing Narset and Modern. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, option to do one of those two things, decide to jam Narset today. All Our right. judge just looks to be stepped away already, so we got that clarification that we needed on what's going on here. Oh, are we delving? Oh, oh, we're eating, uh, we're eating cards with the frog to grow the Merc Tide before, before the frog is destroyed to the wrath. And now, now the clock has been shortened as well. So the wrath of the skies and uh, answering the psychic frog in play mm -hmm. and leaving us with just this Merc Tide. Ooh, draw for turn will be a land for Valerie. A watery grave. O. G watery grave. Oh, G watery grave. Valerie definitely likes her her old versions of cards. I um, as far as I'm aware. Mm. Misty rainforest. That's not the old version of the card, but it's a very nice version. Yeah. In the expedition. Merktai coming in for six after getting that pump from the mm -hmm. frog, taking a little snack. George will put himself down to three. Doesn't change the clock at all. Give himself a little more resources, thin to the deck a bit. Don't want to yeah. draw lands at this point. Surveil will help you find that good card. Yeah, George has, I believe, at minimum, five good outs in the form of Solitude and four Bindings. Mm -hmm. And I'd even count a couple of the Teferis and even Narsets to dig again. So a lot of good cards that George could be looking for. Let's see if we're keeping on this Surveil. Ooh, that'll stay on top. We'll keeping see. Keeping it. Hopefully what he draws here. He draws so... Oh, just yes. play it straight up. Let's go. You love it. To ferry onto the stack. There are two types of players. Putting it directly into play off mm -hmm. the top like that, or people like myself who draw it and try to shuffle your hand as fast as you can so your opponent <laughs> loses track. That's the card you drew this turn. Oh. I gained point zero one equity doing that, but I feel smart. Okay. And, and that's important. That's very important. That's why we play magic, right? We play to, feel smart. to feel smart. <laughs> Have fun, feel smart. Ooh, Teferi, watery grave. <laughs> Teferi will come down, bounce the Merc Tide back to Valerie's turn. We'll fetch up a bit. This is the finals. Final round. UB Frog Tide here taking on Jeskai Narset Control deep in a game number one between these two players. But Valerie really chipping away at George's controlling board. But uh, three is not none. And we're going to see if this Jeskai deck bites on mm -hmm. back. That's what they do best is dig deep. Yeah, that's what they do. And that's why I can't play this deck. Yeah. I'm on a team of like three, four diehard, you know, Jeskai control players. Mm -hmm. I don't like the like helpless falling behind feeling of playing mm. the control decks. I just can't get past it. I've tried, tried and tried. For sure. Yeah. No, that that's a great point. I don't have the endurance or the patience. Right. I've always said there are two types of decks in Magic. There are those that are questions and answers, mm. right? Those who are pushing the threats and those who are answering the threats. I like to be a problem. Yeah, I was about <laughs> to say the same. I, like to, I identify as a problem. I identify as a problem. <laughs> That's great, yeah. And then uh, George likes to identify as... He's a problem solver. A problem solver? I was going to say the fun police. No. As long as I'm <laughs> George, George is a problem solver. All right, all right. We'll be nice. Merc Tide will come back down, double away the rest of the grave. Yeah, but I think we ate two lands. I think we're just sitting on a 3-3. Three, three, That's George, enough. He George literally fetched himself down to to um, a lethal there. Oh, but a counterspell. Magic con counterspell. 
Shoot, Valerie's got some mana up, though. Does she have any responses? Spell Snare would get there. Ooh, yeah. I wonder if we were thinking about it before. Right, because we saw that Wrath yep. attempt earlier. Looks like we're tapping one mana. There we go. Terry's in play, though. Oh, no. <laughs> I forgot about it, too, Valerie. It's okay. Oh, we've all been there. Oh, man. Yeah, this beautiful bird to fairy really just pushing. That's a really good card against the counter spell. And man, oh, man. <laughs> George is moving his mana like he's finally got something to do with it here. <laughs> Oh, well. Oh, I, yeah. Did you forget that oh, was there? oh, man, I did. From the turn one surveil, right? No, that was that oh, other game. Oh, phew. Yeah, that was like a couple of rounds ago. She, I was or like, the whatever, wait, what? whenever George was on last year, yeah. Uh, dippity dappity big jaws, consider. Does, does. Does. Oh, escape doesn't give it haste, excuse me. No, it's that's the, the arena ETB. one two combo. Yeah. Oh, man, so fast. <laughs> I don't even know if George saw the spell that was that that uh Valerie was casting there before he forced it. Didn't matter. He was just like, "I'm killing you next turn." Uh, yep. Correct. This flage is crashing in for lethal. All and right. if your opponent's going for a draw spell like that, they're looking for something. Mm -hmm. Especially in a scenario like this, so George not giving them the chance to even try to look. No, no resources for you. Sink into stupor. Bounce the flage back. Okay. Mm -hmm. George doesn't want that to resolve either. He's going to fetch. Oh. Nah, we're going to surveil. Okay. Huh. It's. I'm. Take a look. That's so interesting to me. And then he's going to decide if he wants to force it now. Yeah, he's got the most information. And he will force will it. will force. Pitch the days and doing to cast. And, that's and that'll scoop it up because Flage will survive. Valerie out of resources to deal with it. George will take game one and we'll move to sideboards. Moving to sideboards. Gonna look at the main deck. We'll take a look at Valerie's list here first. This is her full 75 that she has submitted. Thank you very much, Valerie. If you guys have any questions for her, check out our Discord. Her sideboard consists of Harbinger of the Tides, Cling to Dust, Consigned to Memory, Stern Scolding, Break the Ice, Toxic Deluge, and Nile Spellbomb. I want these spell bombs, no matter what, to help me fight against that opposing flage. I think that's the biggest threat, yeah. And then the question is, do you want to play some Harbingers? <laughs> the allure um, of the Blood Moon effects. What if you just bring it in in every matchup? I don't know if Harbinger does enough. I think... Which is super fair. <laughs> I think you need, like, what do you board out, right? What does Great. Drag the Canal do? I love Drag the Canal. It creates a, it's a flash, well, it's an instant, uh, blue and a black. Creates a 2-2 two, two, detective, but if you... It it's uh, a detective? Yeah. But let's say if a creature died this turn, you get to gain two life, surveil two, and investigate. Okay, all right. A so card you would probably take out in this matchup. But a card that I really, really wanted to it play. Seems, it seems okay in the grindy matchup, right? It gives yes. you it gives two surveils and a clue. Mm, but only if a creature dies. Which you're not going to see too much of. Yeah, like, between at solitude all. pending, binding, the wraths are the one-time creatures be dying. When oh, the no. flage comes out for the first time, it dies. That would So we can hang on to this drag. We Although I don't think we've bombs. ever seen George cast a flage without escaping it, right? <laughs> he's always surveilled it into the yard. Yeah, he's kind of gotten a little lucky maybe a time or two. I guess fatal pushes are an easy remove from the deck, right? Board that yes. out. So that gives you at least one extra thing to bring in because you only have two now spell bombs. And oh, no, you have four fatal pushes. So there's your space if you want to bring in these harbingers. Yeah, bring in the push and the harbingers or maybe even try to use the consigns to uh, trigger or counter Solitude trigger, subtlety trigger, leyline binding trigger, and flage trigger. Okay. Um, I've actually heard the Jess guy players are bringing consigns against each other in the mirror, which makes you think Valerie might just want them as well. All right, we'll take a look at George's deck list as well. He submitted Bye -bye. his. Thank you very much, George. You can also check his list out on flexslot.gg. He is the creator. Shout out to the Flexslot gang. We have one of them in the booth with us as well. Hello. We'll check out his sideboard. We have Flage, Obsidian Charma, Consigned to Memory, Celestial Purge, uh, Wrath of the Skies, Days Undoing, Mystical Dispute, Supreme Verdict, and Soul Guide Lantern. 
Dave's Undoing, Mystical Disputes, Soul Guide Lanterns. These are the five that we went for last time. Did we take out Rats? The Wrath of the Skies? Yeah. <clears throat> I think so, because you're one for one with these. Mm -hmm. Again, mm -hmm. specifically just the frogs. I think that's the cut here. And you might, you probably shave the three rats and maybe a discharge or two. For, for kind of that same reason, it can't hit Merktide, so it's only hitting frogs. And they can grow their frogs out of range. Mm. So you might be a little careful about that. I wonder about <laughs> cutting cutting Wrath, but bringing in the Verdict. So you can make sure that you answer what you're trying to answer. Especially because Valley's running so many counter spells, right? The fact that Supreme Verdict yes. can't be countered yes, uh, is so. really, really strong. So then we're looking at Days of Knowing, Dispute, Dispute, Verdict, Soul Guide, Soul Guide. So that bottom six, we're looking at probably at least these three Wrath of the Skies, maybe some number of Galvanic Discharges, and maybe like a Lorien or something odd just to make sure that you got that space. And we're going to send it. An important note about George's deck here, we are... Slanting our mana base to play Narsets instead of the One Ring, which means we do not have Manamo in the mana base, and we do not currently have an Arena of Glory to go with the Flages. Mm -hmm. So, George is skewing all the, like, fancy lands uh, in favor of having Gyre Reach, a cleaner mana base, and a Domain mana base to be able to play the Leyline Bindings and the Narsets. All right, we'll head back down to the action here with Valerie on the play for Game 2. I think players have both found starting sevens. Valerie moving cards around in her card holder to get a good look at everything. Hello, Icy Frog. Yes, we've got a frog deck for <laughs> you. Psychic it's Frog. It's froggy out there It's today. very froggy out there. Our players, I think, slowly but surely, like, there was one frog deck, then two frog decks, and today there's, like, eight frog yeah, decks. Out yeah, yeah. It started going heavy on the frogs very quickly. Thoughtsies? Or I okay. I can't That's see. That's an I okay. Uh, you'll see the big, beautiful Kozilek. There. there we go. Yeah. Taking the only card it can take in this counter spell, leaving Binding, Binding, Solitude. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Binding, you only cast for one, uh, but it does cost six. So I okay cannot target it. I think counter spell is a fine grab, honestly. I like that. Yeah, I'll trade my hand disruption for actual factual counter spell. Right. Versus three removal spells, but that means that I might be able to put something in play, might be able to protect it, so on and so forth. Yeah, so do you cast a frog on turn two if you have it here in the face of two ley line bindings? Uh, no. Because Georgie here can use our scalding tarn and go find the elegant parlor and surveil, mm. then use our other fetch to find Zagoth Trium and use the parlor to answer the frog. So there you can get go, access well. to that turn two binding while also uh, weaving a surveil in due to the use of the elegant parlor. All right. On turn two, Valerie's first play instead of a frog, like she did game one, will be a preordain. Yeah, that same thought. She most likely wants to set up play frog, protect frog, mm -hmm. and that's a few turns down the line. So. Yeah, you don't want to slam frog on turn two in the face of all the stuff that George is working with. Yeah, it's very different against these like controlling trial strategies mm -hmm. that you may want to try to slam it once you have protection versus some other decks where you want to play the frog out and then interact until the game is over. Fetching down to 17. Again, is land. Thinking about maybe playing another interactive piece. I think you're fine tapping out in these very early stages to play cantrips and just find the cards that you need. Mm -hmm. Second preordain. She will do that. Taking a look. Taking a look. Oh. I think we're seeing what, I mean, because we, we honestly do have so little Nadu in, um, mm -hmm. in our local meta that Zero. I feel like we're getting, I mean, yeah, Marty didn't even show up today, right? Or I, I guess we have Hammer. Hammer yeah, plays. We have, uh, we have a Nadu. one single Nadu Hammer player. The other two Nadu players, one is playing Legacy and one's right here. <laughs> yeah, so I think we're getting a really good look at what people seem to think the, yep. the modern format is going to look like in a few weeks. It's going to be a lot of this Jeskai Control and this Psychic Frog, Merktide sort of lists. Yeah. And we saw that uh, through the Breach list earlier. Another deck that will really be able to pop up when you just get to play one extra turn of a game. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I actually think Rich's turns deck is going to see a big surgence, uh, okay. resurgence. I think it's going to come back. I think he's the, a real real heads-up pioneer. All right, he's going to push <laughs> for it. I think so. It's very fun to play. I think, yeah. I think all decks should be fun to play. All decks should be fun to play. Hot take. Hot, hot take. People <laughs> should enjoy playing Magic. Hot take. Magic is a game, and if you're not having fun, stop playing. Oh. Ooh. Shoot. Ooh. Oh, shoot. 
Thundering Falls, George accomplishing two things, both getting a <laughs> surveil on and getting that f- sweet, sweet domain. Wow, what a play by our season <laughs> one winner, George yeah. Jabor. He has completed the domain package and now can cast Leyline Binding for a single white mana. Which is important because if two of these face down cards, unknown to Valerie, are blue based interaction, we still have access to playing both of those across our two lands in play. Land or Bowman. spell for the turn will be a bowmaster before the full spell resolution happens. Leyline binding will come down and eat up. I wonder if the orcish bowmaster George yeah. will take that single ping. Boop. The orc army will still happen, but it can't grow the orc army anymore. No more grow. No more growth. Everyone's everyone's saying it. No more growth. Shrink the game. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard that happen well, that, a couple well, of times. Well, that was the old RCQ policy. Now we're ba- now we're back to um, grow the game. Grow the game, I guess. No, no, no. I think the old policy was grow the game because people couldn't replay mm. after queuing, right? Now at least there's a reason with the U.S. getting two RCs. Thank you so much. That that does grow the game as well. So there's you know we're balancing it out. It actually does what people are wanting, which is grow the game but shrink the event. <laughs> mm, yes, yes, we don't need two thousand player uh, mm. RCs. That would that that would be a little much, I think. Yeah, <laughs> keep them to a thousand. Flage, flage. We'll come down. George casting it for the first time from his hand. We'll clean up the orc army and bring him up to twenty to Valerie's fifteen. It's just a lightning helix for now. Mm. Mm-hmm. Cling to dust. Cling to dust is a great cyborg car for Valerie in this instance. We'll exile the flage. Just a little snack, just on flage. We'll see when she's able to start putting some pressure on George. She's up to 18 now, but hasn't put any pressure on him in the form of creatures. Just starting to deal with his bit of pressure. We'll see if we get any Psychic Frogs cast. I think this would be the turn to do it now that she can hold up interaction. Sink into Stupor is three mana. There's a subtlety there as well. I can't see her yeah. full hand because of the position of the card holder. I think Valerie's getting close to being incentivized to hold up this subtlety because uh, if George tries to go for any of his impactful Planeswalkers, we have both a threat and interaction rolled into one card. Mm-hmm. But this tapping for two here makes me think we might be doing just what you thought. Push. Hmm. Play a frog? Maybe a little bit of a frog? Oh. We'll tap three a third mana. mana. <laughs> what oh, what is three mana in her in her deck? Uh, maybe A Days and Doing. Harbinger. It's a Harbinger! Oh boy. And look at yep. <laughs> George is yeah, snap yeah, touching no. for this island. No, no, that's no oh no. But he doesn't need that, so he's gonna go find his second planes instead. He was, he went mm. so fast. Remember the harbinger is going to turn them into islands. Right. What George can do here by finding second planes is it unlocks the ability to cast Supreme Verdict, Solitude, Rathless, guys, Solitude. But I think <gasps> George might not have that second. He's gonna uh, throw white swords. Whoa! He doesn't have two planes in the deck. I guess not. Blue moon We've with talked, a side of tartar talked sauce. talked about this. What does that mean? No idea. What is tartar sauce? Shout out, shout out, last god though. Thank Hello. you for the Subarino. Our one of our first supporters of the channel. First. Oh wait, they resubscribed. I totally, I totally, I totally, I totally, I so, I was so, I was so shook by, by what they mean with tartar sauce that I missed yes. the resubscribe notification. Oh, fish sticks. Yeah. Oh, that's that's funny. That's a good joke. I like calling this card Flood Moon. You think he's got the second planes in hand? Which maybe. Hmm. Okay. But I I know. Chatting with George, we've had debates about the basics and the number of basics. And he's been on two planes for a long time. Yeah, you have to have two planes when you run stuff like Solitude and, and Supreme Verdict and Wrath, right? Mm-hmm. And Flage. And Flage, yes. Mm-hmm. To Fairy will be the cast. You could oh, bounce yeah. it, yeah. unlock mana for a little bit. Unlock mana specifically to have access to Leyline Binding when Valerie tries to replay it. She plays it. You can't. No. No. You have because you have to respond to it. Yeah, like yeah. It, it, once yeah. it resolves and then you go to Leyline Binding, you no you longer have, have domain. domain. Right. So domain would be two. Domain would be two. 
Oh, but she's going to settle tea it anyway. So it didn't even resolve. Back on top of the deck, though. George will try and replay it again. Probably next turn. Yeah, because this card's very good. Teferi, still good. <laughs> hey, Teferi, really good, good card. Still remember good. remember when Valerie tried to counterspell something and George pointed at the card on, on the field? That was a, that was a good remember. moment. You remember. I was very strong. Pretty, pretty, mm. pretty good. All right. It feels like Valerie, despite having this Harbinger out, maybe not in a super strong position. I, I can't, I can't, I wish I knew how many cards are in her hand, exactly how many resources she has to work with here. Feels like few. Yeah, I don't think she has too many, especially because she's subtletied. Um, I don't think she mulliganed at all. She started with full seven. Mm -hmm. Looks like a delve about to happen here, though. Be Mark Tide will Mark come Tide. down. George, George does have two mana open. Doesn't doesn't have the counter spell though. I feel like he would have immediately swung that over. Harbinger will swing in to bring George to seventeen to Valerie's eighteen. Back on his turn, Teferi oh. will be cast. And here George can use Teferi to bounce the Harbinger, use the mana now unlocked to Leyland binding the Mark Tide. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just making sure we got the, the exile count correct. That is Teferi, Time Raveler. <laughs> the beautiful bird. Yeah, which bird is Teferi? Do we have that Reddit thread still, Bryce? <laughs> I do know, just like the Narset one, it is a an appropriate bird from where the character would be from. Okay. Get out of here. This card's a beautiful. It's what's... It's secretary bird. A secretary bird. Yeah, that's okay. actually what they're called. I remember people saying that when this came out. Leyline binding will get cast. George pointing out domain. Recently unlocked due to no more fish mm -hmm. in play. What is that walker? Yeah, uh, in Bloomboro they have this thing. It's kind of like the Marvel What If series. <laughs> what if they were on Bloomboro? What, what if they went to Bloomboro? They didn't actually go to Bloomboro in the canon, but it's what if they did? They would be transformed into animals, and or a lot of a tree. Or a tree, yes. Karn, <laughs> Karn got the, the short end of the stick there, for he sure. He should be a rock, but he's a tree. He's well, a tree. A, a rock doesn't isn't living, right? Yeah, but he's made of metal. He is made of metal. Maybe it's a metal tree. That's a thing. Maybe not in Bloomboro, though. Probably <laughs> not in Bloomboro. It's more like a Phyrexia Mirrodin thing. Harbinger of the Sea is back here. George is working off that one single <laughs> planes. I don't think they're... If they're mm. birds, I don't think they're furries, right? They're like featheries. Ah, that's a different. Is term. that? Yeah, it's a, it's a different <laughs> I don't know term. the. I don't know the lingo. Down this Leyland buying number three. Dang, we got all sorts of stuff being tied to the tracks today. <laughs> all right, <laughs> that is wow. Uh, that's that's quite a pile of cards we got there in the middle. <laughs> Draw for Valerie's turn will be a subtlety. I don't think she's too happy about that one. Avi it is Featheries! Let's no, go! I'm I not, was right! I wouldn't have begun this conversation, but now What's we're in the wrong? middle of it. It's <laughs> happening. I think it's good to be um, you know, aware. Yeah, I'm aware. We're all aware. <laughs> Shout out to uh friends, you know who they are. Shout out to the furry community. Shout outs. Just Wear it to Madison. Let's if go. if they're birds, do they all gain flying? I, what is yeah, what Teferi does the planeswalker with flying well, even mean? Well, then it means it could only be attacked, attacked by creatures with flying. That'd be cool. I think that'd be a cool design oh, space actually to give it, to make to like print a planeswalker with flying. Can we call it roost? Can they roost? be like yeah roosting like to be oh like yeah nested and they're like up in the top of the tree and only flyers can attack the walker. Bird fairy the wind walker. Oh, good. that's so good. I love that. Yeah, shout out. Good use of your first time chat. Excellent. Yes. Oh, absolutely. And Valerie here, just trying to get something going. Yeah. George has been holding up <laughs> this solitude the whole game. Mm hmm. Been trying to unlock our mana. We did so by locking away. And now that frog, say goodbye. Oh, uh, I mean, do you even cast no. it there? I don't think you do. But he's, because, yeah. That. I don't think he would cast the, the Solitude with no targets, right? So you would just make him take the turn off. Mm. Um, but then the Teferi continue. Oh, but then yeah. that's, that's the mm. like the free counterspell effect. Right. If you don't play it, you just gave him a free one that turn. But maybe you force him to cast the, the Solitude at no targets mm. so that he starts, you know, maybe putting some pressure on you, and then you can play the frog next turn. Yeah. Mm. 
No. Well, like I said, very rough position for Valerie. Solitude will begin to swing in here. 15 to 19, George's favor. Teferi makes things incredibly rough as well. Turns off any potential instant spells Valerie could use in the face of all of George's spells. Down tick to fairy on nothing just to draw a card. Just because you can. Show of strength for George. Life totals continue to swing in his favor with this life-gaining solitude. Flog. That solitude art is beautiful. Flog. It's a, it's a really good one. Pl oh, my goodness. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Valerie. <laughs> you just thought George wasn't going to have it? I mean, yeah, maybe. <laughs> you must hope. If you are on the side of Valerie, who... Aviva has specifically said is the hero here. I mean the the lighting. She's just she's she's so <laughs> front lit. Like I just yeah. George literally he's got like he's got like all <laughs> yes. He's all got right. the shadow of the hat blocking his eyes. Yeah. As we all know, George famously like villainous, right? Just like a real evil dude. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've always real been, I've bad always guy. It. I've always said it. Just like Billie Eilish said. Duh. <laughs> He'll swing in with his elementals, bringing and Valerie down to just six points of life, exactly which is... Exactly the six George is in play. Yep, this that's the exactly turn. the whole... Here's the frog! George has nothing, right? A counterspell. Counterspell. Counterspell oh, and can't scoop. scoop him up. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I don't know if Valerie could have done anything too, too differently oh, there. It's hard. It's hard. Uh, George's deck, I, I always talk about this, like, one step above makes it really difficult. Yeah. This UB Frog deck is really designed to beat up on everybody else out there. Mm -hmm. This Just Guy deck just being one step slower, one step stronger, makes it very effective in this ma match up against the UB Frog deck. Good games all around. George will be your undefeated player on the night. Ends the game at 24 life. <laughs> and four oh good games all around thank you so much friends oh goodness chatter don't do that those are bad <laughs> words and george technically, <laughs> technically would have won the game at 27 27 sure sure sure, sure. <laughs> <laughs> before we head out we're gonna run through a quick couple of advertisements for the store we appreciate you hanging out tonight folks make sure to hit that follow button before you head out we're live every wednesday at 6 30 Right with here. magic coverage, and tomorrow we'll be live with Pokemon coverage as well. Ooh. We're we're about to send several players to Worlds in Hawaii, so if you want some really heads-up, knowledgeable commentary, check them out on Thursdays. We support five different games at this store for organized play. Here's all the ways that you can play them. Monday is Commander and Digimon. Tuesday is One Piece League and Lorcana. Wednesday is Modern. We are not in League play right now, but we will resume in a little bit. Keep an eye on socials for when that gets announced. Thursday is Commander and Pokemon. Friday is Double f &M Legacy and Standard as well as One Piece. And Saturday is Digimon League. Uh, if you'd like to play competitive Magic, why don't you check out the Energy Series? We are the organizer. The Ener Nerd Rage Gaming is, surprise, the organizer <laughs> of the NRG series. And there's a bunch of different ways that you can play in Madison. Saturday's event has been broken down into two events now. It is a 5K Modern Showdown still, as well as a 5K Bloomboro Sealed. So if you want to check that out, head on over to Madison August 24th and 5th. Sunday will be our Team Trios event as well, Legacy, Standard, and Modern. So grab yourself and two buddies and sign up for that. Spots will go for that quick. Team events, almost always cap. They, they are very, very popular. So make sure you sign up for that if you plan on going. Uh, what else should we talk about before we go? The Discord. Love it, the Discord. If you want to ask our players any questions about the decks that you saw tonight, head on over to the Discord. There's also the Series Discord there. If you're looking for teammates for that Madison event, you can find people to team with there. And uh, ask questions of the store employees for promotions or products that you're interested in. The series coordinators, if you have questions about that. All that good stuff. Um, I think that'll wrap up coverage <laughs> for tonight, folks. I think I've done my job. Dom, you did your job well as well. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for tuning in, folks. You have a good night. Take care. Bye.